What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another explosive episode of the Vile Files Reality Recap Edition. I am your host, Nick, joined by the household. We have Allie and wherever the fuck are you these days? Same place you always been in the same place. (laughs) Just checking. Could be like it could be an AI background, and who knows? You could be anywhere. You could be lying about it. I don't know. I just move this painting wherever I go. Yeah, that's how I was thinking. You. <laughs> Literally, you could be anywhere right I now. I bring it to the airport. I'm like, this is my personal yeah. item. <laughs> Don't need my boss to know where I am. Uh, we have Sierra. We got Leia. We got Sweet, Sweet, Sweet Boy. I'm sorry, Scooter. Uh, also, yeah. formerly known as Leia. <laughs> Scoots <laughs> McGoots. Yeah, just and so Sweet Boy Justin, they're actually sharing a little. We're sharing our brains. Yeah, because we, uh, we have so many voices these days. And our special guest today. Zach. Very special. Zach, what's your last name? <laughs> wow. Zach Wait, Wickham. I'm so glad you did your research for this one. <laughs> no, it's uh we only know about characters by first name on reality TV. No, that's fine. It's Zach Wickham. Were you introduced as your last name or was it just Zach on the Valley? Wickham. I don't, actually don't know if they See, that's I'm sure what I'm they saying. say that's it not some... my fault. It's the it's fucking <laughs> Bravo's fault. I guess they they're putting credits. That. Yeah, they definitely wouldn't say your last names, do they? Yeah, they just like... say our first. <laughs> and Sarah's like Zach. From the Valley is available to come on. I and said I Zach like, Wickham. His, it's, on this, it's on the schedule. Did you? It's on, on the schedule. Well, Zach, we welcome you. Welcome <laughs> well, to the show. We're me. so good to have you. Uh, we have so many questions about you in the Valley. <laughs> thank you also for me being your first Valley guest. Yeah. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yes. are welcome. Yeah. And I'm loving the Valley. So I, I, a I, uh, timely episode for you to be on. Boy, I think so. Wow, you really, <laughs> boy. God. Wait, what episode? I've seen one episode. You're at further. the dinner. You're yeah, at, okay. mm-hmm. at the, the Italy way, dinner. Yeah, the, the way Jesse chaos. says Capri. You were involved in a in a in a conversation that was about the R word. So that's there. heavy. Okay, maybe let's specify race. Oh, race, racism, <laughs> racism. Well, how many R words? Oh, yeah, there's a couple. There's, there, there's yeah. one more. There's, there's a lot. There's, there's okay. one really big one. <laughs> Either way, yeah, you were you were in in the fires, so to speak. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like the episode kind of um, portrayed everybody's feelings about that getting brought up. I don't think anybody would have wanted to discuss that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into it yeah. with you when we get into the valley. We are excited <laughs> to have you, Zach Wickham. Period. <laughs> uh, what did everyone do this weekend? Any fun stuff? Went to the Laker game last night. Ooh. <gasps> now, like, oh God, I've been telling Nick yeah, I want to go to an NBA game. Yeah. I'm also here. I know he didn't introduce me, but I am also here for everyone listening. Hello, how are you? <laughs> yeah. You just breeze right over me. <laughs> so. Oh, my love of my life. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. <laughs> Mother yeah. of my child. Yes. Yeah. Soon to be wife. Soon to be wife. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. This is him showing his empathy. Right. right. Exactly. That's, exactly. that's love. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You understand. Just jump mm-hmm. right over me. <laughs> you were just like, hey, we got to get going. We got to get going. Ah, I got to work out. You know, that's what you were saying. And then he forgot about you. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was, okay. I wanted to talk about our date night. That's why. Well, what did everyone do this weekend? That's what I was so excited to talk about. It was, really, it was about you. Okay, well, then go ahead. How no. was our date night? No, how was everyone's weekend? Oh. My weekend was fantastic. I went to brunch on Saturday. Thank you, Sierra. Yeah, it was fantastic. I had an Aperol spritz. Um, I'm going to mm. France in a month or two, end of end of May. So I went <laughs> well, to- Which one is it? In a month or is it in two months? Sir, <laughs> I'm just saying I went to a French restaurant to feel like in the ambiance. Did you ask for time off? Yeah. Oh, I, told, I, told him, I, I told him when he hired me. I go, by the way, I have a trip in three months to France. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, That's better than what I'm I did. Uh, That's, it's, it's, That's better than what I did. I said, hi, um, I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't hire me, that's discrimination. Yeah. As soon as I hired her, she's like, and by the way, <laughs> what's your policy on paternity? Maternity. Which one is it? Maternity. maternity. Mm-hmm. Nick, Natalie, how was your weekend? Thank you for asking. Jessica, what'd you do this? Oh. There. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone okay? <laughs> <laughs> Looks at Natalie. Zach. Justin, Thanks for asking. <laughs> I heard of Derek too. Derek Thanks too. for asking. Zach, how was your weekend? <laughs> My weekend was pretty great. What'd you do? Um, I spent the entire most of the weekend with Brittany. <gasps> Brittany. Cartwright. Cartwright. She's got a last name. Cartwright. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't know. Thanks to Bravo. It's like Brittany, uh, you know, Spears or... Brittany Jax. Don't you think at this like day and age that especially for how many seasons they've been on or whatever however long a show's on why don't they just put our social tags under it too so it's like it's usually your first and last wait i feel like i just saw that on was it 
Summer House? Does Summer House do that? Summer House puts their jobs under it, which I think is super weird. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. <laughs> it should, like, one of them was Influencer. I was like, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, Lindsay. Like, this, Lindsay. This I was season. Like, mm. Lindsay has Influencer? Lindsay, yeah. not, she's proudly an Influencer this season. That's her job title. Yeah. Mm. I just think also putting your job titles like that is weird. But. Former because, like, publicist, this, they should put. Truly. It, it should all be former. <laughs> You're on a show. Well, we're, that's we're not, not true. Stupid. Like Paige is doing lots of things. Podcaster. Yeah, yeah, but you're doing lots of things, but that's like not really what defines you. Like or what's it makes on, sense for what on the like fuck the fuck do you do, Zach? <laughs> I'm an influence. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do not influence. I feel like, uh, no, I do social media and PR. Oh. What does that mean? That means um, when I find people that need help with their social media. Like, what were you doing like before Jax Taylor showed up in your door and said, hey, well, I'm trying to make a TV show. Do you want to be on it? Uh, he's known Britney I, since. I've known Britney since college. So Britney yeah. got you on it. Yeah. He's a Kentucky boy. Yep. But I've what known... were you doing before? I was an executive personal assistant for on and off for six years. Okay. And then also did social media management for multiple celebrities. Okay. And yeah. Kind of was just so in that you world. Know. went to you said you went to college with Brittany in Kentucky. We so I met her uh, right as I graduated college. So you've known her for a long time. Yeah, I've known her for like. Wait, I don't want to say. No, I'm just kidding. Say, I, I was like, yourself. I've, Go I've ahead. only known her for two years. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, I just graduated. <laughs> right. So yeah. you were friends with her when she met Jax. Yeah. And was, like, where were you on the like? Hey, red flag. You know, heads up. I mean, I'm I don't. Like, think, I don't know if this is your guy. Well, I no. I didn't, I hadn't like experienced him. I didn't know anything about him. Well, no, like back then I truly did not know who he was. I didn't know anything about his actual character. Gotcha. Yeah. He's this person on TV that acts bigger than life, but I, like I didn't have any substance behind it or knew anything. And all he was doing is treating Brittany great at the beginning. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Did you go back and watch any of Vanderpump when she was like, I'm dating this guy. He's on this TV show. You're where you're like, hold on, let me do a little research. I don't th I didn't do it while um, when she like told me that she was dating this guy. It was once because I was actually already moving to L.A. and she met Jax. And then three months later was like, oh, wait, I'm moving to L.A. because I was getting my master's in business and um, oh. was I like to drop that sometimes. Cash, no, as you should. Um, did you it. did you get your master's in business? I did graduate with okay. it, so okay. I did. Two I years do ago, have, yeah. remember? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm too young to have a master's. Sorry. <laughs> How old are you? Um, 24. Duh. Never ask an age. I, are you? I don't know. No, I'm. I'm. 37. Oh, oh God damn. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, now my career's over. Great. Well, your full head. <laughs> your, your, your full head. Your hair is so full that the internet has questioned its authenticity. <gasps> okay. I'm not going to lie. This He's is. He's like. <laughs> no, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the studio. And each one of you are gonna take tug on off. my hair. Take the head off. The, the ha I will. Well, I will when he's got headphones uh, on. Yeah, Sorry. I will eventually. Okay, but okay, it, I'm not. I'm not wearing. <laughs> I'm not really? wearing. Oh my god, you did just pull a sheet. You pull take your hat off. Yeah. Take, your hat take off. your fucking hat off. Right, I'm gonna bully you until you Ooh. take your hat off. I <laughs> I'm sorry. Also, <laughs> I, I just, I just Nick suggested. Nick is Sheena. Nick is Sheena. I didn't say. <laughs> oh my God, Allie. It all makes sense. Clip it. Nick is also, Sheena. Uh, also, did he not just start the podcast by saying he was empathetic and then he's like, take your damn hat off now. <laughs> Literally. Show me the hair Show plugs. me the toupee. The Show me the plugs. toupee. The hair plugs. This was your opportunity to, to, to like brag about your full head of hair. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm gonna. Let's hear it. I'm assuming but it's I just nothing but gorgeous well volume i mean the thing is it's just it's very coarse and kind of unmanageable and blink twice it, if you don't want to keep talking about it you can move on no it's okay. like kind of my thing i right. think that's what i need to like run with right now you have no. a great head of hair yeah but also i've gotten this kind of throughout my life i think once i was like 18 and then went into corporate and stuff people would every once in a while still bring up that it's a wig and i'm like I don't, I don't get it, but I, I knew that some people would say it. I just didn't realize the amount of people that would just be like, oh no. And here's comparisons to a Lego man and to this and to, and I was like, oh no, I was like, well, it doesn't not look like that. So <laughs> like, You're like, wait, I kind of agree. No, I will say in that first confessional, let me, let me just put this to rest too. I was supposed to film the next, like not that day that we actually filmed it. I was supposed to film the next day and I had a haircut set Stop. and you're not supposed to get your hair cut or change your hair yeah. during the season. My yeah. hair grows too fast. So I hadn't like 
cut my hair at all. And I was like, I look crazy. I knew I looked crazy. I had been wearing a hat the past couple of weeks of filming and which you'll see, but then they changed my date and I couldn't get my hair cut anymore. And I was like, guys, I begged production. <laughs> Don't understand. I begged produ <laughs> this was going to be my first confessional interview too. And I was like, guys, like I have my haircut set for this, blah, blah, blah. Please don't do this to me. And they were like, no, like you please. Uh, blah, blah. And I was like, you look so and good. Of course, because as I, soon as you start letting production know what's important to you, they'll do the opposite. <laughs> well, I know. Well, and, and like you're in season one, you're not trying to, you know, Rock be a boat. diva yeah, and yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll move it. Whatever. And now I regret it immediately. You like get <laughs> my production, see, you're like, look what you've done. But I also told them, I was like, I'm going to have a haircut for the next confessional, so it's not going to look the same. And in next week's episode, you'll, uh, you're will you going to be like... Completely different? It's completely different because mm. it's cut. That is so okay. funny. Yeah. Well, period. Okay. So therefore, debunked, it <laughs> is his real hair. And I will let you all tug on it at the end so you can like see it. Like, I don't... Someone said, show us your scalp. I'm like, <gasps> oh my God. I don't... Sure. <laughs> aggressive. Like, I was like, but even if I do, I know none of y'all are going to believe me. You're going to be like, Taylor Swift. We I blame Taylor Swift. We got a yank on it. We I blame Taylor Swift. It. She has created, everybody is now a conspiracy theorist because of her. Because, because she actually, she You're always. You blame Taylor Swift? Because she actually had Easter eggs that she started. And when her fans caught on to that, now they think everything is truly an Easter egg. I'm like, no, guys, not everything is a conspiracy theory. Like, I don't okay. know. I don't know sure. if I want to blame Taylor Swift for all the crazy conspiracy theorists in our country, but no, not oh well. Oh, you know what? That was terrible, and you're gonna keep that in because I said <laughs> that. Great, but um, not all of them. But like, I think when Some it comes them. to like reality or like music and stuff. But back to what you're doing this weekend. Before we get into our oh, date yeah, sorry. night, you helped Britney move from Jax, so like reconciliation doesn't seem to be in their future. My thing is, I don't like to talk on other people's relationships, but what I will say from my perspective as being her best friend, being there from the beginning and seeing what I've seen behind closed doors and in front of cameras, at this point, he is not doing, she has set out a list of things you need to do, which by the way, are basic things like basic, basic like things. Being faithful with that. Is that in there? Honestly, like, is it even working at this point? Like he hasn't had sex with her in so long. And I don't think he like, let's be real. Brittany has all his passwords. You know what I mean? Like there is no secrets in this marriage. And I think he would be, that would be stupid if he had cheated, but also, I mean, I don't I mean, even think Brittany no would care at this point. She'd be like, whatever, you're not doing any of these things. That's the bottom of the what list. are some of the things. Like we'll just the go to therapy. Oh. Like let's do a couple you, but also he needs like, not just couples therapy to like see, to work on that individual therapy mm -hmm. get like you have he has got to work on himself and just do small things like close the cabinets like it's it just or well, i mean i don't, don't yell at her cabinets. actually just don't just yell, don't yell at, her. at her like that's one too like calm down sometimes <laughs> read my one. read my text messages like she will view my instagram him. story no Oh, is that your all story? <laughs> I don't close cabinets, Ooh. and I, I I am not stalking her Instagram stories. Oh wow! Sorry, so you just unlocked something. I was like, of Pandora me. just yeah. came out. Great. Yeah. Sorry, the trauma guys. in our relationship. Yes, <laughs> spilling out. Sorry. I'm like, did you Didn't see my the... story? He's like, mm, it's like still from three days ago, like well, lingering. You mean 23 hours? Well, you know, if it could be three days, it would be three days. <laughs> <laughs> but see, you you could set up alerts for that, you know. So every you know, you could, I mean? turn, you you could, could turn fix this right now. Me. Yeah, I could. I could see <laughs> yeah i'm here to solve problems Thank you so much how's britney's new place it is the coolest why I'm did like, britney have to move out and not jacks because Jax is Jax, and he is he's never gonna do what is nice or easy or best for britney which really sucks he's but a piece of shit he i can't get out of his own way and can't learn from his mistakes and it's really sad to see someone cares? that i do care about i do care about him and i want the best for him and I don't know if that's them together. Do you think Jax cares about anybody? I think Jax does care about people, but the problem is he doesn't. How? Mm, see, you're right. This is a pressure cooker. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just um, genuinely no, curious. Like, no, how I'm, does he care about people? I think in his own way, he does show people he cares sometimes. But unfortunately, there are so many more 
bad times. But like, you know, Tom Sandoval shows people he cares by like picking them up at the airport. Or like giving them gifts. Yeah. Like you know. just paying, didn't so he give Sheena Venmo's. like $10,000 or something? Yeah. yeah like, like, I will he loves say, to Venmo people. I will say but it's Thomas not, it's not for done. free. You know, it's not, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's to feel good, you know, to, to look good. Does to... Jax do anything like that? No, and he would hold it against you. If he Ooh, gave you a yeah, gift, he'd he be totally like, would. I gave you that. I see that, he would yeah. He's one of those, like, yeah. He's but, like, well, I paid your rent four years ago, so you owe me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that does suck. Um, but at the same time, like, he does have, he is a great guy in a lot of ways. And he, the one thing I will hands down say is he's a great dad. Okay. So did Britney move out with Cruz or is Cruz well, they, they, staying in the house? They're is, isn't part of being a great dad doing- being a, yeah, you know, just like doing all the things as a partner and not being a shitty person to the and baby's mom. Child. Yeah, I mean, we we all agree that that is what it should be. I think even he would agree. I don't know why he can't do it. Like the thing is, you can only have so many chances in life, and I think Brittany, seen especially the last three years, have just been so. I don't want to say dehumanizing, but like kind of dehumanizing to her. She has had to endure so much, and like. The thing is, she is such a great human and tries so hard to see the best in people and not change people, but give them the opportunity to grow and be better. That is such a special thing that you don't see in people. <laughs> but she can only do it so much. And and we've gotten to the point or he's gotten to the point where there isn't any growth. This is what it is. This is, is what it is. But they're on their own timeline. And I would never speak on if they're divorcing or if they're because that is them. and. And I, that's up to her, but so is she Cru got another month. You know what I mean? It's another month that she, cause she just rents by the month. Oh, she's on a month to month. Yeah. So she, so Cruz is just staying at. Cruz goes back, he and, goes forth. back and forth. So okay. she'll, they, cause he has speech there. You know, he has all of his things yeah, yeah. and now he's in soccer. <gasps> cute. Yeah, it's on Instagram. I was like, wait, am I spoiling something? No, he's in soccer. It's so cute. And um, so they, you know, they go to that on Sunday. Also, people keep coming at Britney for being with Jax on like Easter or or being with Jax at this or that. It's like well, that they, share they share a kid, child together know. and businesses yeah. and businesses. And like people are like, it's weird that they're trying to do the podcast. That OK, I'm sorry. But I mean, honestly, though, how what what like if you two are you guys married? Uh, out to be. Oh, okay. So, like, let's say you get married and then divorce. How cool would it be to have a divorce podcast? Where, you know what I mean? I feel like the a divorce I mean, podcast. I mean, again, I guess, sure, but I, I mean, but it's your it's it money. Would, it wouldn't last very long. I would say that. Well, and I'm not. It start I, I don't messy. know. I don't know but how long it'll last at, at, with them going back yeah, and forth right, right, and right, figuring. Yeah, it's just out, like but. at some point, like real emotions come into play, you know, and you know, a lot like Ariana this week. Sometimes you just like feel how you feel and like, you know, there's the human side of a actual relationship, even the public facing ones that, you know, we work together and it's just like, yeah, I guess in a perfect world, sure. But like, it, it makes you question the authenticity when they are seamlessly still working together. Well, I know? promise you it is not seamless. <laughs> like, behind, I was like, I okay, <laughs> I was like, it is not seamless at all. There is silence in the car mm -hmm. before, you know, whatever. It, it It's like, okay, let's get this done because it's it business. Yeah. And then, yeah. It's so what was, I mean, was it her being like, here's a list of things I need you to do? And he's like, I can't do any of that. Or was there a specific thing that like broke the camel's back? Well, for her, there was a specific moment where he was just like, it was a, just another tirade and another whatever. Brittany will actually clear it up later. Yeah. But um, it was just, and she just finally, she, she's even said before, the veil was lifted. And then, because even when they've gotten in fights or they've had issues, she's always been 100% fully in love with him and tries to see the best and work through it. And they also have a child. So, you yeah, know, yeah. but all of a sudden that veil was lifted and she's finally seen what <gasps> I see. And I'm like, wait, wait, you see, you see that too. That's, <gasps> this isn't an oh opera. Like you, I'm like, oh my God, thank God. And now Brittany is, I've never seen Brittany so happy in like years free so free like we got to her the airbnb which by the way it was like so cool um and it's like a smart house and all this stuff and we just started like singing song and she was just so happy Aww. and i just haven't seen her be genuinely truly happy in so long it sounds like Jax taylor is like the wicked witch of the west you know it sounds like he sucked the life out of her 
He, Do we drop a house on him? That's what I'm saying. You know, it's just like I was like, what legally can we drop on him? <laughs> well, Nellie and I had a great date night. <laughs> We're still in love, in case anyone was wondering. Love that. Well, love that for you. Where'd you go? <clears throat> uh, well, Natalie, to her credit, mm -hmm. said, "Would you like to go on a date with me this weekend?" Oh, I thought you asked her. Yeah, nope. well. Well, Nally, it well. was Nally's idea. Okay. Then Nally informed me that that's where her job had ended. Yes, of course. Love that. I suggest, oh. and then you do the rest. And then she's like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, where are we going? She goes, oh, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> Wine and dining. That is not you. <laughs> Uh, so we went to, uh, is it, is it B Boulevard Steak? Boulevard Steak, Yeah, yes. it's a new place in uh, the Valley. Mm -hmm. If one more person goes to Boulevard Steak, I, I like, swear to God, it's the, Britney's favorite restaurant now. It's, it's a nice, like every, no, it's great. It's a good vibe. I'm like, it just opened. It's a good vibe. It's just, I don't know if it's our favorite there. restaurant yet, that's for sure. But it's a Janet nice little vibe. I, I, I love, love, well, and I think Janet's actually friends with, so am I like, go to before, yeah. 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 It's, it's a wonderful little vibe. Uh, and then I got her flowers preceding our date. I know that was so cute. You know, he sent me flowers and said, "Excited yeah, for our, our date." date. Yeah. Aww. Aww. See, that's how you keep the love alive, guys. Right? We Simple flew her mom gestures. in to babysit just yeah. for the date. No, I mean we did fly her mom in to help <laughs> oh. babysit because oh, wow. we're, we're like, taking the show on the road. <laughs> Okay, Next great. week we'll be, we uh, be recording right in Coachella. <laughs> yeah, God. Uh, and we had a nice little celebration of our, our first date out post yeah. kid. Yeah, talked about our love. Did you open the door for her? Yeah, I did. Even uh, after the date. Well, I definitely opened the door to get put you in the car after dinner. After dinner, yeah. I didn't Not do it before. Not leaving the house. No. Not leaving the house. You had to move your car because you were parked move... behind me. Yeah, that's okay. And Nick didn't want to take his car. It's a whole thing. He it's said logistic. it was too dirty. Yeah, it's... yeah it, he it didn't want to put I, me in a dirty I, car. I didn't. I wanted her to look, you know, I wanted her to feel pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I also went tuxedo. Tuxedo? Tuxedo? I, I went tuxedo shopping this oh. weekend for the wedding. Did you find what you're looking for? I mean, we are on absolute crunch time. And I, I was, was like, you say. don't have anything that's, to wear to our wedding. Well, well that's not like, true. I have multiple tuxedos. You've got cowboy yeah, boots. Yeah, he was going to eat this <laughs> man. <laughs> he so does have cowboy boots. Are you going to allow that? Oh, our welcome party is country chic. I'm like, oh, okay, bring out the cool. bolo ties, give the, me the suede, that's cowboy hats. Cowboy boots. I'm, oh, cowboy boots. I'm not supposed to be like wearing them into the wedding. I've worn them every day since I got them. Every day. Literally. I'm not wearing them today. Shocked. How do your feet feel? Oh my God. Like, shame me. Why don't you? <laughs> I well, told Nick the other morning he was getting ready for work. And I said, why don't you pick something unpredictable? <laughs> <laughs> my brain broke. Yeah, he was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's I like a robot. It's that's like, amazing. I love that. <laughs> I saw that you uh, styled him. I've been trying. Impressive. For the past four years. No. <laughs> is he finally letting you? No, I've been letting her. For the past you four, year, four years. I've, I've, uh, I've gotten out of the skinny jeans. By the way, you should try getting out of the skinny jeans, Sarah. <laughs> These aren't really skinny. <laughs> they're not not skinny. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, yeah, um, I do to you. I was like, and these are not skinny jeans. They're not skinny. They're like a boot cut. And Those actually, are not a boot cut. Yes, they Those are. are skinny jeans. These are most definitely a boot I, I don't fit in skinny jeans. I have <laughs> massive calves. I have and thighs. I have big thighs too, buddy. Um, <laughs> those are skinny jeans. No, they're not. You're, what are you talking? About? I mean, I will, are you yeah, dying like, on this hill? That those are skinny jeans? What are, what are they? They're not boot cut. Yes, they're boot cut. I think jeans. they're boot cut. What is the? I could put boots. What does the them? ankle look like? Yeah, let's Stand see the ankle. Why don't you leave him the, alone? The okay, you want me to leave him alone. Okay. Okay. Take your hat leave off. Leave him alone. Take your shoes Literally, off. Literally, y'all are attacking my everything, friend Zach, and y'all need about to relax. You know, it's terrible. Attacking. I, I like. I'm just saying they are. I just pointed out that they're skinny jeans. <laughs> Anyways, I got Nick out of skinny jeans because he would fucking not. He would not. He would not. I was he in would, skinny was jeans for like 15 years. The Chelsea boots, the skinny jeans. It was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> see, like this is in exactly. skinny because you can. Okay. Skinny would be like. Those yes, would be skinnier. Yes. No, there's not a skinnier <laughs> jean oh, section. Adios, it's skinny. Adios. It's boot cut. It's straight cut. There's no skinny skinnier. <laughs> yes, there are. Oh, boy. Wow. Anyways. <laughs> Nally has gotten me out. Of skinny jeans, which gotten... I recommend to all middle-aged men. Yeah, because chances are, if you're wearing skinny jeans now, you probably just got into them five years ago. You're like you, you finally got into the skinny jeans. Finally, you were like proud of yourself because you used to wear bootcut jeans. I'm talking about my friends who live in Wisconsin. I was like, my boyfriend still wears bootcut jeans that are like wide, wider leg than I like. <laughs> I've, well, I've wider, Nick, wider's back. I've got Nick in like the baggiest of baggies. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's and? so free. Oh my god, love. Well, it's relaxing. It's comfortable. 
you know, I seem less uptight. I really hate skinny jeans anyway. Like it reminds me of Silver Lake and like hipsters and mm. it just has like that certain connotation <gasps> to me. Okay. Always. And I've I never hate them. Not I guess I don't hate hipsters. I'm just saying like I hate <laughs> Jesus. Wow, here again, let's just add to the list. Okay. Reasons why great. <laughs> Anyways, Anyways Nick went <laughs> Nick went tuck shopping and finally, finally, finally got something to wear to our wedding. I it's Natalie's fault, but I spent way more than I anticipated. Do you like how you looked? I think so. Yes. <laughs> it's just like the I I splurged. Yeah. Which, I've always wanted a Tom Ford something. That's uh, fantastic. That's, that's what can't I can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Um and I will say, you know, I'm not um you know, I'm not a big hunter gatherer, you know. I'm not a fisherman, you know. I don't care I don't give a fuck about cars. But I uh, I feel my most masculine when I'm rocking a good tuxedo or or suit. Like okay. I I uh, I like a suit. I'm I'm very particular with my suits. Like I'm like I like a good, you know, um, like a GQ moment, like a 007. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I have preferences. I have, you know, I, I know about them. You know, I like a good tailor. I like that moment where your tailor's like talking to you and getting, you know, it's like, I think it's the time where a guy can look, uh, and hear me out here. I think every guy wants to look dashing. And I think if you're a guy and a girl, like, and you're out at a party and a lady is kind of like, Oh my God, he's just so, I don't know what it is. It's like, he's, dashing like she she wants to fuck you if, if it, <laughs> only if she says dashing if she says any other word <laughs> don't dapper, even fucking think about it dapper, whatever exactly. but like i think dashing is a, is a is a compliment women often don't use and they save it for when they like don't know how to describe a guy who walks into a room guys are like do you want a netflix and chill girls are like you dashing man <laughs> no because no dashing. no no woman is going to say that about a guy who says do you want a netflix and chill but when he walks into a party like fucking suited up and he's like kind of not paying attention to you and he's looking dashing you're like who is that guy i don't in know the corner? if i've ever used that adjective in my life i also have not known <laughs> I, yeah you don't, no. you don't i don't I'm live a, in bridgerton you don't like you don't like, yeah. like dashing what do you, what, if you were what compliment would you Handsome? Yeah, it's like so basic. So no, hot, I know you wouldn't. Sexy? You, look? you wouldn't use handsome. You yes, wouldn't. I do. Nah. Well, it's you're saying it would be better than handsome. I'm a fucking idiot. What am I know? <laughs> okay. I uh, I like a good suit. Anyways, I I splurge a little bit. But I feel like it's only fair because I am splurging on a fucking wedding dress that I'm only going to wear once. Mm -hmm. He can wear this tux a million times over, but how many times can I pull up my wedding dress? <laughs> Once. <laughs> I feel like you you could pull it out more. It just might turn be some weird. heads. Yeah, yeah like go like, to Boulevard. So I should not want to look dashing. Dashing is not the goal. No, I just, no, now we course. know that. It's now like, I know to say that to you when you dashing. put it on. Well, I don't need now. Oh. That seems forced. Natalie at the first look, she's like dashing. But my question to you, Nick <laughs> is. What happened to the pinstripe suit that was I know. your big splurge? Exactly. I thought about this morning on the way to work. It's just like this is twice. This was more than that. This was a lot. But you've never even worn that one again. This I definitely can wear again. Yeah, Nick splurged on Ben Higgins on the wedding. On it was post pandemic. Is there like first week and out? He was you know, real excited. I didn't spend Baron's anything. Wedding, I didn't. Yeah. I I hadn't gone clothes shopping in over a year, and I was like, well, you know. And, and then I, I bought something that like you really can't wear more than once. His critic said he looked like um, mm. what's that? Skeleton man, Jack Skellington. Yes. Mm. <laughs> it, it was a loud pinstripe moment. Oh. Yeah. yeah, but it was cute. It was a moment. <laughs> it had some Tom Tom Sandoval probably would have worn it, you know? and he probably would have gotten called skeleton too. Yeah. But he would have worn it like not to it. He would have worn it to like sir. But this one, so I can. Um, uh, well, you know who's not married? Gypsy Rose uh, and Ryan. Well, Anderson. technically, I think they are. Well, they're getting a well, divorce, yeah. and Estranged. he is finally. It's getting messy. Yes, and he posted a TikTok. And well, he before was like, we he posted the TikTok, it was. Like right after we recorded Going Deeper, Gypsy was getting a matching tattoo from her ex fiance. What's his name? Ken. 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 Yes. Ma Ken. They got a matching dolphin tattoo? Was that was that what it is? Because they love the ocean. <laughs> I feel like a dolphin got tattoo. At a shop in Los Angeles. Is the tattoo version. Wait, what? They were they in were LA? Here. The former loves got matching dog designs. Dog? Oh. Dog? That's a dog? Oh, no. Uh, the source told TMZ it was a dog design. Can we see the tattoo? Husky dog. That's what it was. Husky <laughs> dog. Yeah. I thought it was like a dolphin. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, because it does have the curve of it, a dolphin. Oh, yeah, it does yeah. look a little bit like a dolphin upside down. It has a dolphin. 
It's a, supposedly a symbol for their strong bond. Here okay, go. so strong so, that he broke up with her when she was in prison and she got married to someone else? But then they re- they found their way back to each other. I guess. What do we think? It's getting messy. And then then there was a there was a report out there. Gypsy said that she was afraid he was going to hit her. He didn't, but that happened in the past with her mother, so her instinct was to something. But I'm just saying the point being is that a source told People magazine that she was in fear that he might hit her, and that's why they needed to break up. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know. I mean, this might be a hot take, but it's a little... uh, I don't know. I feel like it's it's just not nice, I guess, to like put out there that this guy might potentially be violent if he hasn't been. Like yeah. it's not confirmed. It's literally in the wording of that he he she felt like he might. Which it I also feel sounds like, like a lot like he didn't. But exactly, exactly. I also feel like it's a lot of her past just projecting mm-hmm. right. and not actually, you know, like I think she just maybe wasn't. She's not ready to be with anyone because she has so much to work on. For and sure. It's like yeah. She's obviously not, I mean, how could you be like healed from these years and years and years of abuse? But it's like maybe like that's it's you're just you just need to maybe continue to work on your Well the next day after that report came out out, Ryan quickly went to the internet to not say much, but simply said, you know, the kind of a uh, the truth will come out, so to speak. Okay. Like the- I guess they've been filming like every day on Lifetime, kind of like a reality TV show, Life After Prison or something. I think is what it's called. Yeah, which uh, sounds like it's going to be entertaining. I completely agree with you, kind of like I said last week. Look, you know, as far as Gypsy is concerned, like it all kind of makes sense that she's kind of figuring herself out. The only problem now is now, you know, listen, like, like like Tom Sandoval, so to speak, or I guess anyone in a relationship, now her actions um, of her figuring herself out are involving other people. You know, like Ryan, you know, who we got to meet when we interviewed Gypsy. Like, when when that whole interview was set up, like, we were asked to have Ryan on, you know, which we were very curious to do because obviously, like, we wanted to learn about Gypsy's relationship. Right. Ryan was part of that whole press tour. Ryan was thrusted into the mm-hmm. spotlight. I mean, guys, there's an argument we made that he forced himself on, you know, like it was all him. I don't know, man, I guess that's always possible. But like now he's receiving a lot of, you know, now he's being accused of, of things that he didn't do, but it's, you know, and we don't, you know what I'm saying? Like they literally said he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. So there is that. And then you have Ken, you know, in it who would like, he sir when I when we interviewed Gypsy and Ryan sure sounded like a guy who was in it for the attention uh who reached back out after she was getting out of prison you know I mean she said he while they were together she was like I guess shopping online and would send clothes or things she bought for like once she got out of prison to Ken's house while they were still together she sent a bunch of stuff to his house and she was like he will not give me my stuff like he's holding it hostage to like see me again she was like it's so like you know, they were super offended by it. Well, it's just like, you know, first day we found out that Gypsy and Ryan are not together. And what felt like the next day, or maybe it was literally the next day, she's out with Ken getting matching tattoos. All she, you know, she's also got a, she's got a rhinoplasty nose job done. She's been very busy. I just hope she finds like a good group of like girlfriends. Because I feel like she's getting a lot of her, uh, in how to navigate through this world by like dependency on a male counterpart. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really seeing any like females in her life that are giving her some. Sound she advice. did say that she's pretty close with her stepmom during that interview. So, like, I would hope that maybe, you know, her family is stepping up in that way because they did that whole, like, welcome home party with her when she got out. But we'll see. I, but I do think, yeah, I agree. I think you need more than them. I think you need, like, unbiased. Like, obviously, her family has been very much involved in this whole thing. So it's like maybe someone coming in with a fresh. But it's, it's getting messy. It's but when like, you it's... go through so much trauma like that, I feel like. Of course, it's going to be messy. Like, she's going to be messy for years to come. Do we really think that Ken was going to be forever? Like, the way she defended it so much or the way they defended it so much on social... Or Ryan? Was that the one? Sorry. Ryan's Ryan's her husband. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. Ryan. I mean, either, I guess. uh, Right. (laughs) But when she, like, defended him so much, it's like... mm, I feel like when you have to go on the defensive of a relationship already, it's already doomed. I I did reach out to Ryan, you know, and, and... just because he's the only number I have. And I just was asking if, how's he doing? He mentioned he's not doing well. 
you know? Yeah. He didn't really elaborate on anything else and kind of get, said as much to me about like, all will be revealed. Um, Tune in and see. But uh, mentioned that emotionally he's down bad. I, I, I still wish everyone the best, especially Gypsy, but like she is starting to make decisions at least that come across as maybe kind of cavalier to everyone else in her peripheral. Let's like, you know, let's like, yeah, she just, you know, she's figuring herself out, but like as she figures herself herself out, like how much collateral damage is there, is, is there going to be? There's gonna be casualties. You know, yeah. and and then when and when you start like having collateral damage, then you you don't get to just be like, well, I'm still figuring myself out because you are now starting to affect other people's uh, lives and like emotional health and and mental health and things like that and then it, you know then you then you have to kind of start holding yourself accountable. Really. So speaking I don't of, know. there's a lot of uh, divorces uh, happening. A lot of divorce announcements as of lately. We've got Sasha Baron Cohen and Isla Fisher. So sad. Which mm. I did so not sad. see that coming. And the accusations from Rebel, like what? Right. Do you think it's it was an ex- what accusation? Rebel Wilson? No, I know that she said that he was an asshole, but were there other accusations? Other than that, he's, yeah, I guess was an asshole. Okay, just making sure that asshole, I didn't miss anything. I think, didn't she say he, like, was, like, coming on to her, doing some stuff behind closed doors? I, I don't know. Ooh, um, yeah, I, don't I will know. look into that. Oh, yeah, pull that up. Um, Aspen Ovard and Parker Ferris, who are, like, a lot of people might not know who they are. It's a little bit niche, maybe. But if you're, like, in the YouTube world, they are OG, like, YouTubers, Okay. Oh, gee. I mean, got like high school sweethearts got married at 19 and 20. They now she just gave birth to her third girl. They have three girls and they were like vlog family, like people I like obsessed with them. And they live in Utah. And I think he was part of Mormon church and then left. You know, I think that whole mix is involved. Mm-hmm. But their divorce was announced, or she filed for divorce the same day she announced her third baby That's on social crazy. media. That's a lot. Like what what had to happen? Right. How bad? Yeah. Like- and prior to said announcement, like again, at least on social media, the he was a participant in obviously the delivery, yeah. posting what seemed to be like everyone's happy, everyone's good because you know we just had another child. Blessings. They went on like a baby moon right before. Why he was, and then just like. And she then, obviously and- had, now people are like going back and looking at stuff. She did change like their YouTube name. It was the two of them. She changed it just to hers. Like and what she ha- hasn't what been happened? wearing her ring for a while, which obviously like pregnancy, you can't really wear it. But yeah, it is like, whoa, the same day that you announced your something bad. Something is going on. But it's so sad. What They've, are people speculating? I don't really know. There's some like crazy stuff that it people are saying good. and it, it, it it's not just like irreconcilable differences you know it's not like we just realized we couldn't get along mm-hmm. i mean even as hard as i am on Jax taylor it sounds like this was a accumulation of a bunch of i don't want to say little but a bunch of things that Brittany was just like you know what you're not the guy for me not like one you know is is one as, giant thing as audacious right. as Jax taylor has been in the past with some of his his crimes nice word he uh this this like you don't announce uh, the birth of your third child and file divorce on the same day unless some crazy shit happened right i feel like nothing big happened though because they're they've been known to be like a wholesome couple so i feel like i mean i might Uh, romanticize it but i feel like maybe they just like genuinely were like this is no longer and you think they because i mean even it came out of nowhere like that's people. that's what i'm saying but even like bachelor nation couples like when they don't work out there's always the rumors right First, it's like, well, they haven't posted in a while. No one really actually pays attention and notice because it's like, hey, maybe they've been busy. Like, oh, you know, and then the fans of the couples would be like, yeah, they've been busy. Like, who do we really know? Like, people don't live on the internet. And you're like, okay, that's true. And then maybe sometimes there's like passive aggressive, like non-likes or likes, or, you know, there's always something. And then then, then the couple, like, because, because... Because it's scary. Like, you know, when you have a public facing relationship and you break up, you just know that like once we announce, like there's going to be the annoying I told you so's for all the people who like doubted you. And then like it, you know, it feels bad. And so like it's just this long drawn out process of the slow play because it's like it's easier for the couple for people to just honestly kind of anticipate it coming and see it coming. And like you almost warm people up to the idea that you're not together. Like you don't announce the the birth of your child. 
and then on the same day file for divorce unless you truly had like honestly unless you had to protect yourself in some sort of way right i am curious how it got into mainstream media though like because i feel like I mean, People Magazine, I think, is the the media top that like broke it. Yeah. And like, why is because when you announced the birth of your child and filed a divorce on the I know, same but why day, were they why were they looking at Aspen and Parker? What do you mean? How did they come across that? Well, they're still public f- figures, and I think you're right. They're not. They're more like YouTube famous, which is not necessarily like mainstream. So, like, I don't think the People magazines, the E News, or Us Weeklies typically cover. But that is a mainstream story. Like, you know, like I just think you know, People Magazine will cover you know, non-public facing couples when there's an, a, a, like almost like a, like a, a true crime type of element to it, or, you know, not that this, there's a true crime element here, but again, when you announce the birth of your child and file for divorce on the same day, I don't care if you're a public couple or not. Everyone's kind of like, oh my God, what, what the fuck happened? You're, cu- you're curious. You, something you had to, it can't be irreconcilable differences. I don't know. It's just, I guess. We'll so see. you think it's kind of like a Lindsay Carl kind of separation? That's what you're speculating. What do you mean? Like there has to be some kind of toxic blowout. I, I, to me, I think it would be a safe guess that something very specific happened. An event. She found out something about him or he did something in real time. Or just, I mean, I hate, actually, I hate speculating on this type of stuff. They've got three children. She just gave birth. Her, her third baby is oh in the God, NICU. You can't do this now. No, no, no. I know. But no, I'm saying like, Holy, this that's, is your topic. No, I'm saying like, it's crazy that she announced the the birth of her child and filed for divorce on the same day. That is nuts. But speculating on why they got divorced while she has this like baby in the NICU and she's got two babies at home. Like it is it's so it's so incredibly sad because they did look so wholesome. They looked like such a family unit. And like I truly did love like watching their family vlogs together. So this is sad that it like this totally is what's sad. happening. But we also never know what goes on behind never closed know. doors. You never know. You Except never for with know. Christian Richard, who threw a glass at his child and then yeah, filed so for divorce. I was about to say, he's filing for divorce? That oh, one's wild. Maybe, yeah. I mean, maybe. he just beat Chris, Christine to it. it. He was like, I'm going to call my lawyer first. <laughs> yeah, messy. 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 He's already going to the courthouse, I'm sure, for his uh, arrest. So we might as well just take it to her divorce as yeah, well. He's already there. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, while well, I'm here. Three birds with one is, that on, is that on floor three? Okay, perfect. <laughs> right? Make my appointment back to right back. Yeah. Do you know who's not messy? Who? Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Ew. Well, shout out to Caitlin Clark. Wow. She's just dominating. Have you guys all been following that story? That, that story being like how dominant she is? Every day. <laughs> Allie, I Allie's think. Allie's obsessed. Allie's Allie. in love. Ali has. I'm in love. Yes, she is. Do you have more to say other than you're <laughs> in love? Um, I'm in love with her. I would have her babies. I would raise Iowa Hawkeye children the rest of my life. I understand that her boyfriend it was also a fabulous basketball player, and now she's going to go to Indiana, and they're probably going to live together. But if she ever decides to leave him, I'm here. Well, she has swept the nation with her talents, uh, and to me, that what this story shows us is like the value of a great story. Because, like, for those of you who don't know who Caitlin Clark is, she is the like she is a, a basketball player for the women's Iowa Hawkeyes basketball team. She's awesome. She's so good. She's Michael Jordan good. She is she's supernatural good. She's so good that when you watch her play, she does things that make you go, that's not possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She seems superhuman. Like she throws up a, a ball and you're like, she, she, she closed her eyes. There's no way this one's going in and it goes in. She's that good. She is like game changing. And she's so good that the ratings of these basketball games are literally record breaking. Like the more people are watching Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women's Hawkeye basketball team than people were watching the NBA finals, wow. and which is actually quite fascinating because obviously there's a lot of discourse, you know, about like the popularity of men's sports versus women's sports nowadays with all the conversations going on about, you know, stuff like that. And I just think we're it, all it really tells us is like the power of a great story, a great, compelling character. Like, I don't care who you are, man, woman, there's compelling stories in every group. And like, we just have to look for the great stories mm-hmm. because if it's a great story, people are going to watch. If you are that fucking good at anything, we're going to watch and we're going to care and we're going to root for you. She's like a hero. And people like will go back and looking about like what she has done and how she's been able to get there and the work put into it. Like she is aspirational for all people. Like there are men out there who are like, like, I wish I could be Caitlin Clark because she's so fucking good. Yeah. And that's why she is good, you know, because she's doing superhuman things. And I think you just we, we just have to make sure that we're going after the great stories. How much money do you think she is going to be offered to play in the WNBA? I don't know. 
Well, they're I mean, actually going to make more money so out of publicity. Honestly, she's uh, going to make millions more money. off of branding. Endor- endorsements, brand deals, yeah. But, like, they can't offer her anything crazy because there's a salary cap. Well, they can offer and her the most. And she'll go to Indiana because they're first in the draft. Okay. Damn. Damn, okay, she period. knows a lot, Ellie. <laughs> I grew up an Iowa Hawkeye. Like, the, this is like our team. Pop the fuck No, off. she's like America. I mean, she is the... She Again, she is so good that, like, people who... My, aren't following basketball who you know you don't even have people, to be no people are I just mean, making it like my best friend chambliss is has been watching them and she's like what are you talking about i am a fan of her my grandma visited iowa a couple times ago and i'm like okay whatever you need yeah to, she's like, so popular that everyone wants to like find their why they have a, a reason to root for her and the reason you're rooting for her is because she's such a great story yeah. you know like she is she is so good. It's like when, like Stephen Curry, it's just like everyone likes him because you're not supposed to be able to like throw half court shots, you know, and like have it always go in. That seems like not real. And we love, we love to root for like what seems to be like real, real life superheroes. Like she has transcended the sport, you mm-hmm. know, and that's what makes her so fucking cool. Um, and it's just kind of amazing. Yeah, it's it's like record ratings. I mean, even last night at the, the Laker record. game, I was like watching. We were watching on our phone, like Caitlin Clark play, like while we were at the Laker yeah, game. Yeah, because <laughs> what she is doing, you're just like, oh, everything. It's like, oh my god, you know? It's, yeah, we a record nine point nine million viewers tuned in to watch LSU's win over Iowa in the 2023 national championship game on Monday. Year. Yeah, um, Iowa's ninety eight to eighty four victory over LSU in the Elite Eight of average. 12.3 million viewers. Million. Yeah. And the NBA finals game gets like 10 or 9. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So pop off. Crazy. And I'm not even a sports gay. And I know about Caitlin Clark and I actually watched that game. So yeah. like if that says anything, That's I don't watch saying. sports. Because it's a great fucking story. Yeah. So it's amazing. like we need to go after great stories because every group of people, every class of people have, have great stories to tell. And we have to prioritize great stories over anything else when it comes to like you know showing people's talents anyways well and i thought it was cute too like lisa their coach like they there was some clips of her talking to them in the locker room and she was like do not hang your heads like let's not be sad she's like i know we're sad to lose this group of seniors but at the end of the day like you group of women like have changed the sport of basketball forever she's like what you have done this past season supersedes the final score of the south carolina game that just made my nipples hard. Love that. Zoa, you got to check out Zoa. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's energy drink. Zoa just launched a brand new campaign. It's all about the BDE big. Dwayne Energy. They've got a really awesome new commercial that you can check out at Zoa Energy YouTube channels and Zoa's Instagram. Zoa Energy is a better for you energy drink with great taste, electrolytes, B and C, vitamins, and zero sugar. It's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash. When you drink Zoa Energy drinks, it gives you big Dwayne Energy which gives you the swag, confidence, and energy to help you conquer your day. Here at the Biofiles, my team has loved Zoa Energy to give them the extra boost to get through their days. With ingredients that enhance energy levels, Zoa Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation. They've got eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape, which is also one of my team's favorite, along with the delicious Cherry Limeade. So, get some big Dwayne Energy and order Zoa Energy today, available online and at stores near you. Find it at zoaenergy.com and find retailers like Amazon, 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. I knew when we uh, started dating, babe, that you would give me unconditional love. What I didn't expect is that in addition to the love that I would receive from you, I would receive incredible fashion advice. It was like a two-for-one-er. But you knew. I didn't know. And it's like, I feel like it's the same thing with people who get Vessi. It's like, you're getting a great sneaker, but you're also getting the functionality of the dryness that might be unexpected. Or maybe you expected the dryness, but realize that you get incredible style with Vessi. It's like, so many benefits come from wearing a sneaker shoe. It's just like, it's like receiving all the benefits I get from being in love with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's nothing worse than like, walking like you're going somewhere you're feeling confident you're feeling cute and then stepping in a puddle and like you know your and the rest feet of the day, are like, wet quick, 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 quick. oh, oh my god oh god. god and you get that like that you know it's like the worst itch in the world that damp 
itch on your feet. And you know, you know what I'm talking about, where your feet get real damp and then you get this like burning itch from the dampness of your feet. Yeah, I oh know God. some of you know what I'm listening. Well, that won't happen. We're not with a Vessi shoe because Vessi shoes are 100% waterproof. Vessi has a wild and great selection of waterproof, comfortable shoes that'll get you to where you want to go this summer and make your adventures fun without any type of mishaps, you know, like whether you're going to be going on hiking or you're going to be vacationing, maybe it's go trips to the beach. You only need one pair of sneakers when it comes to Vessi. Yeah, I love how versatile they are. It could be like casual work day and then to like a weekend adventure, like you said, a hike, a beach trip, whatever it is. They are so versatile. They're so cute. They're so comfy. If you want to up their fashion game, maybe go with the Stormburst Low Top. Either way, Vessi is going to keep your feet dry and comfortable this summer wherever you need to go. Vessi will be there by your side to make sure you are comfortable, dry, and looking great. Elevate your summer activities with Vessi's Stormburst and Weekend Shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com. That's V-E-S-S-I.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get your pair today. To get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to stay cool and dry. Again, that's Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off your first purchase. That's Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L. We're coming out with new merch. We're coming out with new merch. I've been in the trenches designing this new merch and I'm really excited to uh, drop it and show all of y'all what I've been cooking in the kitchen. And we're putting a lot of thought and specifically now he's putting a lot of thought into what this merch is going to look like. And there's so much thought that it goes into it. The good news is we don't have to put any thought into when it comes to getting the you this merch that when you buy it, because we use Shopify here at the Vol Files. Shopify is the best in class e-commerce platform that if you are selling anything online, you absolutely need to be selling it through Shopify. Shopify it may, allows you to have an, an exceptional customer-facing website. And then behind the scenes, it's a lot, a lot of drag and drop functionality to manage your store. Uh, every time you guys buy some merch, we get that cha-ching sound on our phone apps through Shopify. You can run your business from your phone, your laptop, computer. It is so easy to design and really just like Anything you need to do when it comes to running your business, you can do in Shopify. In addition to that, there are so many plugin and apps that enhance the Shopify experience. So it's amazing how much you can scale with your business. So whether you're a little mom and pop, small little business like we here are here at the Vile Files, or you want to grow to be a Fortune 100 company, you can start and keep growing with Shopify. You will never outgrow the Shopify platform. That's right. No, 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 no. I can't say enough of great things about Shopify. I've been using it for years now. It is incredible. Shopify helps turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. So whether Nick said you're a small mom and pop shop like we are, you're selling scented soaps, maybe candles, maybe jewelry, offering outdoor outfits. Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L, again, all lowercase. Now to grow your business, no matter what stage you are in, shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L, all lowercase. It's all right. We can just go right into summer. Huh? I think it's time to get into our uh, reality recap. Let's do it. Let's do it. Summer house time. It was finally like an episode that like wasn't just Lindsay and Carl. Yeah. I think the season is so much fun. Not going to lie. Them with the little golf carts inside the house and everything. I, was, I, I really enjoyed. I feel like Nally has some tea to share. Summer house tea. Remember what you said last week about Kyle? Is that him, it? him being the same as Jax? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you got an anonymous message. An anonymous source said that I was right in my... Uh... My, my Someone opinion. who had heard Natalie's commentary about Kyle being the same as Jax Taylor. She said, no. trust your women intuition. Yeah. Someone who, who has a right to have an opinion. Okay. I see. Yeah. So uh, fuck all out. of you in the comments that disagreed with me because uh, that, uh, Inside Source says I'm right. Yeah. So. so Kyle and Amanda house hunting. Okay. Kind of loved that first house they went to. Yeah. That was beautiful. Right? Like, okay. It, it, it Kyle was giving Nick energy while looking at houses. He's like, wait, oh. wait, you, you go from <laughs> oh, <sorry>. Kyle <laughs> is just like Jax to Kyle's giving Nick? Well, no, no, 
no, no. I just think like, there's a there's a correlation. Just there. just it's a just with his energy of like house shopping, just interested. So and like, like not, I was Amanda. I'm like, oh my god, I love this. I can see my children here. I can do this. I can live here. I, I need this house right now. And Nick is like, well, it's fine. I just feel like I hate this mailbox, I hate everything. so we can't live here because their mailbox is ugly. And that's I, why I'm we not can't buying a house like I buy for a pair of jeans. Like you know what? <laughs> if I only wear it once, no big deal, or a suit for that matter. I also feel like they're not on the same page. No. Yeah. No. Not I feel at like all. that's a lot of couples are brought like Tom and Katie. Like they mm-hmm. were never on the same page. They tried to make it work. It's like it's that type of. I don't know how Bravo finds these people that just one wants to do something and the other one wants the nuclear the family opposite, and the other yeah. one wants the party. Right. And even then, I mean, my hot take is that like I I kind of agree with Kyle um, in the sense that I'm like Kyle's business, his livelihood, his friends are in the city. It, there's not going to be a situation to where he can work from home in New Jersey or the Hamptons or wherever they're looking. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? He, doesn't what? he just have lover boy? Commute? Yeah, he's got lover boy, but I'm just like their headquarters and stuff is. Isn't at... the commute from Jersey to New York not that bad? Like, yeah, take the train. I guess it's not that bad. I mean, I guess in my opinion, though, where I'm like, if I'm tell, correct me if I'm wrong, but for me, I'm like, if I'm the breadwinner and I'm gonna have to be leaving the house and like go going to and from, like the convenience of not having to commute 45 minutes or two hours a day to go to work. To provide for a family, like I don't. I think that Nick is. Nick agrees. Fa- no, I, was like, I just saw dust there over here. I, I'm, like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, I was like, did you oh like slow down? I was, I was like, like, I don't um, know what just happened. Well, <laughs> I, I'm like, let's look in Calabasas. Let's look in Agora Hills. Let's look in all these places. And Nick's like, well, the commute to work is gonna be so. I'm like, do we want to drive an hour every day? That being said, it's right also there. something. It's even though I don't want to necessarily drive an hour every day to work now that we have a daughter and we are getting married and we are growing our family for us like we are valuing space and we are thinking about our kids and we're thinking about five or six in the years in the future when she starts going to school and sacrifices at times need to be made you know like for exactly like if kyle were to stay single his whole life i mean like kyle basically acts like a single guy i mean could you imagine being married could you imagine being in a committed relationship and I, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of women listening to the show who not only imagine it, but live it, like are with someone who's out to four in the fucking morning. Yeah, that's a no. For that's me. fucking Could you imagine crazy. Could you uh, imagine? He could never. <laughs> Locks are changed while you're having fun. <laughs> Literally. And it's just like something she deals with. Yeah. On the flip side, something Kyle seems to be dealing with is uh, I also, you know what I also couldn't imagine? On Kyle's end, four in the morning, non-starter. I couldn't imagine Natalie doing that to me or me doing that to Natalie. I also couldn't imagine Nally uh, commenting or receiving comments back and forth from a, a guy who like openly brags about trying to hook up with taken women, a la Jesse. Jesse Solomon. Who's up in like her comments, like calling her beautiful. And they're like, there seems to be some f- sort of flirty, friendly banter that even the upset, obses- like whether it's just obsessed fans like fanning out, they are, are, are sipping this friendship which is like if you're kyle be like what the fuck are what what is what huh a guy again who like his big thing the all i know about jesse the only thing i've learned about him in this whole season we're in episode what five six and he gets he he likes to fuck taking women Mm -hmm. that's his big thing that's how he feels good about himself is to like try to get with women who are not available that's his big claim to fame Mm -hmm. And he is up in the comments. His comment said, I hope your future kid doesn't get bullied for having the hottest mom. And then Amanda replies, prints out and frames comment. Wow. I mean, first of all, <laughs> she is not a mom yet. He is like calling her hot for something he's fantasizing about. It's kind of weird. The scene of Jesse, everyone's like going to bed and Jesse's on FaceTime with whoever the fuck. And he's like, let me see a nip. Let me mm. see. That's like, yeah. so, oh my God, I have like, I can recall so many moments where like, I'm on FaceTime with maybe a f- years ago, years ago, years ago, years ago, where I'm on FaceTime with like a friend Where's and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and it's like, whoa, is that cleavage? Whoa, let me see it. T-. And they try to like talk you into like showing them your boobs. And you're like, what is it? Like, it literally made, like gave me flashbacks to like those moments where you're just like on the phone with some drunk guy. And they're like all horny, like, let me see your nipples. Like, ew, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking no, about? That's Jesse. Yeah. No, Why thank is you. anyone sipping Jesse? Shipping, I think. Shipping, it is. shipping, whatever the fuck. Oh, I was wondering what you were saying by <laughs> sipping. Okay. <laughs> sipping, shipping, shipping, sipping, well, whatever. And I also had an opinion on Jesse too with uh, Paige and 
and him driving down together where it's like we all know that he notoriously has a crush on Paige. And I was like, I just optionally wouldn't sit in a car with somebody I know likes me for three hours alone. And like trying to be like, oh, if I if I get to know him, it's just I, I don't want him to feel weird. Like, I, I don't I don't understand why the need to make him feel comfortable. He's just going to tell you how pretty you are and like flirt with you the whole time. And I get, think out of just like respect for your relationship. I'm like, just throw Amanda in the back of the car. Bring someone with you. You know what I mean? Like, I just thought it was a kind of weird take after all every episode of uh, being called out for flirting with Paige so much. And then Paige is like, no, I'll go along with you. West and Sierra's uh, relationship seems like a showman's to me. It's not going well, in my opinion. I think they're like cute, but like, I just feel like it just seems showmancy. Yeah. Like she's agreed to entertain this relationship, even though she knows she'll never sleep with him. No, I want them to be together so bad. I love Wes yeah, so I like much. Him. Me too. He's so cute. He's and so I think... cute, and none of you would actually date him. Well, you don't know that. <laughs> sure, I you're have right. some questionable Wait, why? exes. Why? <laughs> oh no, you would definitely. You know, that one night after ending in this bizarre world of whatever asshole guy you would have been dating does the asshole thing for the second, you know, or third or hundredth time, and then the West of the world show up and he makes you laugh and you're like oh I should date a guy like you and then you entertain him and you let him flirt with you for three fucking days but you never you're never gonna be with him you're never gonna get with him and that's Sierra and West and like he you know he's funny he makes her laugh he makes her feel good about herself she's chasing him she validates him every day but if she wanted to be with him she would and she's not and she's not going to be and she's entertaining it because it's a showman's he, yeah. is, he is the least douchiest out of everybody. Yeah, no, he, he seems like a say. really stand-up guy. And listen, I don't make the rules. Like, he he seems like a stand-up guy who should have it more luck with the ladies. But unfortunately, you got your tall-ass Jesse fucking Solomon who, like, goes around and then, like, like, fucking taking women. And, like, you know, he gets away with it, you know? And uh, I'm not the one making these choices. I'm not the one doing it i'm just saying sarah is not going to be interested in wes whether when and y'all like to be like oh he's so great and he's so cool and i would date him no you wouldn't you say that i have have. i had an ex that was five three and uh, more body hair than normal so Ah! you know like yeah he was funny (laughs) (laughs) Ah! i'm rooting i'm rooting for west but like i just i love him and i think he's so sweet and so cute and i think sierra does and i think honestly she's just like genuinely taking it Mm -hmm. slow and they live in a house together and but they mm-hmm. sleep in the bed together every night yep. and no, cuddle she is, and make out. Just and... because she's not threatened by him. That's why, because she's not intimidated by him, you know. You know that effect when you're at summer camp and it's like you're there for a certain amount of time and then everyone who you came in with and you're like, they're not hot, they're not it. And then all of a sudden at the end of summer, you're like, oh, oh my God. My I like you. Yeah. I feel like that's a little bit like this where it's like, A, all the other options are not it. And then also you're just like with this person every weekend and eventually they start to grow on you. No, he'll def he's like a he'll do. That's how she yeah. sees him. Well I think it's a friend zone type situation because if you're already sleeping in bed with him and you're not doing anything with him, come on. Yeah. Like your friend Well, zone. I think that she knows that there's a camera in the corner of the bedroom. So she's like, you sure. know what? I'm not gonna go down on you here. Maybe let's do it in my apartment. I think it's a Ooh. showman's I think it's I yeah you're right. It definitely that could be happening. I do I just don't think it is. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for the West of the world. I don't I f- make the rules. You all make the rules. But I'm just pointing out what the rules are. There's exceptions. Truly, there always are. I disagree. I do think the Kyle and Amanda, it they just, when they argue, it's so fucking awkward for mm-hmm. everyone involved. Oh, yeah. Everyone, it's like like them at that, was it a preview for next week or was it this episode? The it was, Italy table? Yes. yes. It was, was the was end of the episode of the Italian dinner. I mean, I was like, uncomfortable watching because their argument they're just like they do that thing where (laughs) they argue over like someone's telling a story they're like oh my god so this like crazy thing happened nick and i were at this place we were at the thrift store on tuesday and it's like it wasn't tuesday it's wednesday like no it was tuesday no it wasn't and they start arguing and it's like okay it doesn't fucking matter like don't like why is this important? Yeah, and they're not even looking at each <laughs> yeah. other when they argue. They're just like talking to the other people in the room. Like, yes. Yeah. Doesn't they it bother you? They kind of hate each other. And they're together because they've been together, not yeah. because they want it. Like, not they, they didn't wake up today and be, I choose you. You're my person. It's like, oh, we're still together. You're here. It was yeah. when she <laughs> said that she wants to get a house out of the city that she could be at anywhere from like one, two weeks, maybe a month at a time. And that one was like a big, like, red flag yeah Paige I'm, was even like a, mo- a huh? mom <laughs> like I'm like um I love my partner he also drives me crazy sometimes but I couldn't imagine being like I'm gonna optionally stay somewhere away from you for a month because you're not at home with the kids 
What do we think mm-hmm. about um, Flower Boy? Oh, so insulting. That was my favorite part. So insulting. I like Paige. I was like, the pettiness. Page eight during that. You know, <laughs> yeah, we're all page. Even know if you're the father. She's like, I was dying. You know, it's it is. I mean, he he officiated and was co best man. Mm-hmm. He had two of the most important titles. And Lindsay said, "Your friend can be in it, just as a flower boy." Wait, did Lindsay actually say that? The though? accusation because, is that this is said, all like Lindsay's doing behind Carl? the scenes. He knew deep down that Lindsay probably would say that. Well, great, but that Carl confirmed fair. it. That's not fair. No, he. He says during the episode that deep that, down he felt that that's what she. But that's exactly. that, that's not on Lindsay. That's on Carl. Okay. That's on Carl. Then, yeah. If she didn't actually say that, and he's just assuming that that would be her opinion, then that's on him. And even wait, wait, wait. Even if Lindsay did say it, it's, it's up to Lindsay. Carl to like. Carl is friends with Kyle, not Lindsay. I mean, sure, they're all friends, but like. But he could have stepped up first. Yeah, and been like, like he chose not to have. He chose not to even have the conversation with yeah, Lindsay. About that's on it. Carl. Yeah, well, because then it paints. Lindsay in a bad light. So yeah. now Paige thinks it's Lindsay, so Lindsay's going to get the flack for this decision that she never made. Or even, yeah. again, even if she made it, it's up to Carl to defend his friendships and yeah. to say, hey, I, I was a, in a, he was my officiant or yeah. vice versa or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was I'm, also in Brittany and Jax's wedding and Brittany, like, I was on Brittany's side and she made that very clear from the beginning to Jax, like, nope, it, I don't care about aesthetics or whatever. Like, Zach's on my side. Like, she f- immediately fought for it and was like, he's going to be in the party. So for for him not to stand up, I feel like that's kind of a slap in his face. A thousand percent. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And I can tell you, if you asked me to be the flower boy like that, I'd be like, okay, great. And I would come in. I've never done drag before. I'd be in full drag. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be throwing bouquets to everybody. You ask, you shall receive. That being yeah, said, you ask me to Ky- do something, we get in there. First, Kyle does what you think is the appropriate thing, being like, you know what? It's not my wedding. If that's what Carl wants me to do, I'll step up and do it. But then he proceeds, as we see, I think, in the previews to like, or it was at this episode too, I always kind of like, but he's like whining to Carl's groomsmen about not being in the wedding party. So at the, I could, I just couldn't imagine. I know this is a well, TV show. Well, he was talking to, to the make, other flower boy. Even still, yeah. I just couldn't imagine showing up to like a wedding event. Like I had my bachelor party and like some of my friends who came to my bachelor party, which was super low key anyways, like some of them aren't. In my wedding party. Oh, yeah. wait. Mm. Lindsay did say in the after show that that was what it was. Was that the hotel that they uh, were having their wedding at is an adults only. So her way of com- over, like uh, compromising with Kyle was to make him a flower boy since they weren't going to have any kids in the wedding. Okay. She did oh. say it in the Referring after show. Referring to him as a kid, yeah. Kyle? Okay. Saying that since there's an absence of flower boys. Yeah, flower that's girl, bullshit. a thousand percent. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It was PR spin, Lindsay. You, could, I was like, you could be dual. Like, we don't need them. I'm or- just saying, I couldn't imagine one of my friends at my bachelor party taking the time at my bachelor party to start talking to my other friends about why they're not a groomsman. It's like it's not your fucking wedding. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Kyle deciding to bring it up makes me think less of Kyle, even though he has a right to be upset. It's still not. It's not your place to put it. It's not your wedding. True. And if you're gonna do it, you do it to Carl privately, not at an event that Carl's supposed to be enjoying his time with his groomsmen. I also kind of feel like he took it well initially, but I'm also like you, the word of mouth situation too, where I'm like just telling another person and their opinion of it and whatnot, where I'm like having time to stew on it too. I'm not surprised that like, oh, having feelings about it when you're actually getting fitted and being like, well, here's my flower boy costume. You guys have fun in your groomsmen party because I'm not old enough to join the party. Well, either way, he didn't have to be the flower boy because we know they don't get married. Yep. Well. There is that i think that was it for summer house yes. i do too no, I think yeah we've... i think this was a great episode of vanderpump so do i mm-hmm. oh, we have a lot, lot of opinions i still very much empathize with ariana i get where she's coming from truly as someone who is uh close to marrying the love of my life natalie joy mother of my child who uh, is here today who is here today <laughs> sitting on that couch sitting on that couch wearing a red shirt no but i think you know like now he's like have you been writing your vows i've been thinking about my vows you know and things like that and like to me like you know part of like having a child with natalie and getting married you know especially in 2024 when like the reasons people get married are not the same reasons people got married in the 1940s you know mm-hmm. it's building my tribe you know it's my people my like my family we are building our family we you know last night at on our date we were like You know, I was like, let's plan our life together. Like, you know what I'm saying? We were talking about our goals and like what we want to do and like what we want to achieve as a couple. And like, 
Cute. And like having that family, that tribe, like your people, like, you know, taking care of your own is such a like, you know, it's scary to get older. And like we talk all the time about, you know, friend groups evolve and like, yeah, like, you, you know, not every group is like summer house for you. All, all, you know, when you're in your 20s, you go out every weekend, you're all you and your friends, even though you're in a relationship, you're all going out, you're partying. It's like, what are we doing this weekend? We're going out popping bottles. And like you get to your 30s and like some people mature and some people like don't and kind of gets a little old. There's friend breakups and things like that. But like, as you get older, like the only thing you have is your family. And like, there's something like, I, I'm very excited about that, like to get married to Natalie and have a kid be like, you know, I wake up every day with the purpose of taking care of my family. And that's, and I feel like you hear Ariana talk about, you know, like, I, again, like she, you know, we can say whatever, you know, hey, you dated Tom Sandoval for a decade, but like, that was her her family, you know, her, her and the dogs and they, you know, they froze some eggs, they bought a dream house and whatever their dynamic was, was their dynamic. And even if they had good times and bad times and they had to work through their issues, it seemed like Ariana was like, this is it for me. Like, I'm going to marry this guy or not marry him. I don't know. He's my life partner. Mm -hmm. We bought this house together. We're going to grow old together and we'll have our bumps in the road. But this is my, this is my tribe. And Tom fucked that up. And I think that's what she is still hurting and upset over. With, with that regard, I empathize with uh, Ariana's reasons for still being hurt. Mm -hmm. But like now it's getting to the point where she, she doesn't act like someone who, she acts like she still cares. Like what she doesn't act like is someone who's over it. Well, this has been three months, what, three months after this happened that they're uh, at, that, sitting at a that beach is together. That's important to remind the audience because I just like, now that it's airing, like, you know who it's, would it be a tough watch for? Ariana's boyfriend. If I'm watching that shit, it's like, it just looks like she still very much cares about Tom Sandoval and like the relationship she doesn't have. I, like, I, whether that's true or not, it's just how it comes across. I kind of disagree. I feel like she's not so hung up on Tom. And I think it's more so that she's just frustrated that this whole friend group keeps shoving him down her throat. And it's only been three months. And now Lala wants to be his best friend out of nowhere when they had no real relationship before this. Mm -hmm. And they just keep forcing her to hang out at the beach with him. And they keep forcing her to hang out at the water tasting with him. And she's just frustrated that he has to keep being there. Like when you break up with someone, usually you don't have to see them all the time. Facts. I completely get it. I'm just saying, again, I... I understand why she's upset. I'm just saying from an optics standpoint, I think less and less of people watching it are, you know, she's still coming across as someone who's not over it, not indifferent. And well, I, think, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying it's getting to the point where she's like, wow, you, 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 you cares a lot. I think still. she cares a lot. I think she's very frustrated that her friends keep doing this and keep forcing her to be in social settings with him because yeah, I think, I yeah. think more I people totally... are on that side and Nick's kind of uh, on his own island thinking this. I don't think her I don't think her boyfriend would be I don't think her boyfriend would be like f I think he obviously knows way more than anyone possibly could know about their relationship and what happened and how it's uh, filming with him is like he knows all of Ariana's side, right? So I don't think him watching this he's like mad at her for like still you're still in love with him. Right. <laughs> Whatever the fuck, yeah. he, you know, people might think. And I, I do think it is important to say, like, this is only three months later and sh he is being shoved down her throat and he is at, like acting fucking bizarre and like doing shit that is like pissing her off. I totally get it. But she just isn't coming across as someone who is over it. Well, she also like did say to him, like, like when the Raquel fight or whatever at the very end of season 10, like she was like, like you will never speak to me again. So imagine also like genuinely feeling that and wanting to hold on to that. And then it's like not only your job, but your your close group of friends are also like, well, but you have to. You're yeah. going to have to talk to him. You're going to have to film together or else you're making life difficult for us. And that, like that's what kind of pisses me off, too, is that like everybody's making it seem like her not wanting to be around Sandoval is 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 inconveniencing their lives. And yeah. it's just like you can hang out with people on your own. But like, why is it day after day, water tasting beach? Like, we're all supposed to be this happy group because they are filming a show. A thousand I, percent I, I get where she's coming from. I'm just saying, like, it's it's getting to the point where it's starting to like. I think her reaction is completely warranted. Yeah, and I think it's because we're all seeing it a year later and we've been hearing about mm -hmm. it for so long mm -hmm. that the audience is just tired mm -hmm. because it's almost overload on it. Yeah. And we're just getting to three months in but yeah. it, we're a year into our emotions yeah we're all over it yeah 
and she's probably over she's it over now. It now. <laughs> but like three months fresh, picking up cameras again, and then being like, "Hey, by the way, the man that fucked you over and fucked up your entire dream life, he's going to be sitting less than a foot away from you at the beach, talking about how lazy you are and yeah. talking about how many bills and, you yeah. don't pay and not cleaning up after your cat." And you're just like, "It's not my fault that your dog." Uh, had to go to the hospital because you don't pick up your cat poop. Like, but, well, uh, I again, not valid. Team Ariana here, <laughs> but like that, you know, I, I, if we're getting into the semantics of the whole, like, is Tom Sandoval uh, a dog, a, a attempted dog murderer? That was Ariana's fault. Mm. You Ooh. leaving? Uh, no, I kind of agree with that because it's like, as a dog owner, you don't leave, even if the door is shut. First off, I don't know why we have like a box of old chicken skewers. And it's like, he wasn't going in there to snoop. He was going in there to fix something. And, and while I don't Tom's think house. he should have shut Maya in there, like, you don't leave stuff out that a dog can get into because Anne's walking around the house. Like, you never know what can happen. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, and again, get where Ariana's coming from. But, like, it's, it's both their houses. They don't get to be like, this is my room versus your room. It's their house. There's no, like, separation of rooms. Um, 100%. I just think her trust in him is so broken that she's not going to believe anything he says. And so in her mind, it's like he did it on purpose. Like, and that's he said. kind of my overall point is like, mm -hmm. I, I get where Ariana's coming from. Totally understand all her, all her feelings make total sense and are total valid. But now the longer she stays in this situation, in this environment, like the more you know, she's going to obviously get triggered and get mad, rightfully so. But now you're getting into like a semantics argument where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, as, as much as we might hate Tom Sandoval, like this is not a guy who actually tried to kill a dog, yeah. you know? And it just, it's eventually it's going to be like, eh, maybe just move on, you know? And I get it. You're right. I get her friends are trying to ram Sandoval down her throat. Also, but she also chose to be on this TV show. But they're also not even just ramming Sandoval down her throat. They're at the beach and Brock out of fucking everyone Brock. is like, oh, is that what you did with Raquel? Like makes a fucking joke out of it. And, uh -huh. and Ariana's like, you can have this conversation literally anywhere else but right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Like I think that also adds so much to it is that these people aren't just shoving Sandoval. They're still shoving like Raquel and what they did and like making it like disrespectful no i know but if i if they didn't if they weren't doing that what would we be talking about you know what would be what, what would we be watching i mean that's the thing about like sheena and and lala like i don't agree with really anything they're saying or doing this season you know when i when i think you know you look at like lala right now like kind of shocking how much she is coming at ariana like mm -hmm. she's going hard at the paint she is on a war path and i think it's what's so hysterical about lala and sheena is like what upsets what seems to upset them the most is just how little Ariana tries. Like, Ariana doesn't try at all. Like, recently, Lala was out, I think, on her podcast talking about how, like, pointing out to the audience that, like, Ariana didn't have a storyline if it weren't for Tom Sandoval, as if, like, anyone really cares. Like, the reason, like, it Vanderpump Nation or Bravo Nation, like, and have endeared themselves to Ariana is, like, they saw themselves in her as someone who, like, especially for people who've been cheated on and things like that. And the fact that they love how little she tries. Like, she's the main character because of what she is going through as a person, not because she's... And I respect... Uh, I hustle. Like, good for Lala for hustling. But, like, Lala and Sheena want... And, like, like Sandoval and Sheena and Lala, what they all have in common is, like, they take their job as a, as a character in Vanderpump very fucking seriously. I don't think Ariana does. And the fact that Ariana is the main character for Scandoval, I think just absolutely drives Lala and Sheena nuts because they tr they both try so fucking hard yeah. to be the main character and they just can't accomplish what Ariana has accomplished without trying at all. And I think it drives them so fucking nuts. A thousand percent. It's also like um, I saw a comment recently I under like saying that like listening to Lala's podcast, it's like that they forgot that she was pregnant because of how much like negativity about her castmates that she's spewing like on her podcast. And I do think that where I'm like, you have so much going for you. You just got a new house. You're having your baby. Like, why are you sitting here looking up how many followers or inactive followers your castmates have? And, and you know what I mean? Like, it just seems like for someone who has so much going on, like it's giving boredom. It's giving like finding something to pick at where nobody cares. Do you think it's boredom or do you think it's giving? Jealousy. Or just to play devil's advocate, you know, like for all the criticizing, criticizing of Sheena and Lala that we're doing. You know, they want to even the score. They are the stars of the season. Sure. Like they are the most giving. We're talking. We are. We are. We have talked about Sheena every week. 
you know, for some of the shit she is doing. And yeah, like we could argue that she's been embarrassing herself, but she's embarrassing herself for the sake of excellent television. And we are talking about her. Yeah. You know, and so are Lala and Sheena just like taking one for the team or is this how they genuinely feel? I mean, I personally feel like this is kind of just that because like they have the ability now off camera in their own uh, on their own platforms to say how they feel. And like this is what you guys are choosing to focus on. Still, cameras aren't rolling. But I also think it's also feeding a narrative of what we're supposed to how we're supposed to feel with what we're going to be seeing upcoming in this season. Because you had Andy Cohen saying that Lala was a voice of reason and yeah. made sense by the finale, which I, I don't see that at this moment. She doesn't make any sense. I was like, I don't see it at all right now. You know? I'm very confused. She just sounds yeah. so jealous. Yeah. And focused on <sighs> yeah. other people's stuff. That's where I'm like, or, or bringing it back to people should have cared more about my stuff when it was going on. You make a great point. She should be in her like season of peace and tranquility and like creating this she calls it her soft girl era you know her her this new family new house new baby well it's kind of funny because she said um in one of the episodes or something i think it was to lisa vanderpump she was like oh i'm you know kind of rebranding and like to the give them la la like oh no it's i'm in a different era I'm like, uh, I think you double downed on your give them Lala because I feel like it's that same energy. Yeah, it's a, it's still aggressive energy just because you took it down a couple octaves doesn't mean that like what you're saying doesn't still come with the same like venom and bite, you know? Like, when do we get to meet Lauren from Utah, you know? <sighs> Apparently at the reunion, but we shall mm. see. I I feel like with Katie and Schwartz, they're just like, seeing them with that little, that moment by the pool. Mm -hmm. I felt like was kind of seeing them in their element because they 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 were such good friends. And I do like seeing them like happy separately. Again, I don't know what it is about Bravo finding people that probably don't belong together and like somehow they stay together. Um, but like at that moment, I just felt was like really cool for them that they're they're like getting back that friendship. Yeah, I'm glad they were nice about it. I mean, Swartz is just such the peacemaker. You know, do you think uh, Katie should feel guilty about hooking up with Max? Or do no. you think she was totally no. in the clear? Absolutely no not. Same. And Max just like he's like, oh, hey, I'm here. Anybody want to ride? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think pop off, Katie. You know? you know, that's what I said. I go. And when she gave Schwartz the ultimatum, pretty much is just like, hey, do you. But just don't do it in front of my face. And she's always had respect for him in that in that way, uh, vice versa. Schwartz made out with Raquel at the pool with spotlights around and then was like, oh, you saw that? It didn't mean anything. And I'm like, Katie can do whatever the fuck she wants at this point. Yeah. Uh, and on her podcast, Disrespectfully, shout out, they <laughs> she she said it literally could have been anyone. I was drunk. You know, I just heard about Sheena and Schwartz and, you know, they had a really cool conversation because, you know, Dana has a history with Max. So they have. Oh, she does. Yeah, they yeah. did it. So they have a conversation about it. But. Well, usually the um, the retaliation is often harsher than the first offense, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a reaction to something. Yeah, so it's usually not tit for tat, you know. So and I also don't. And think Schwartz, Schwartz kind of Schwartz. Uh, Schwartz is just literally. I don't think he has a care in the world ever. He's like just such a puppy dog. At I want to know what he cares in the about. best way, though. In the I want to know way. what makes him, what breaks him. His bar, and I feel like that's it. Well, I mean, he care. I mean, he cares about his family. He cares about his brothers. He cares about you know the people in his life. But at the same time, he just is like very forgiving and easygoing. Mm -hmm. I feel like you could just tell him, okay, we're gonna eat Chinese, and he'd be like allergic to Chinese, and he'd probably still eat it. He's yeah. gonna still eat it. <laughs> So I don't know if I talked about this much, but I know obviously, Nick, you were aware my dad was in the hospital for quite some time. Mm. And something that my stepmom did that I thought was so smart was she brought their skylight frame from home and brought it into the hospital. And it was just like showing photos of us, of him and his wife, of his grandchildren, of his pets, like on repeat. It made him feel so at home. It made him feel just like just give him something to fight for. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I know how much he loved it. And so for Mother's Day, which is approaching, I don't know if you forgot. I'm sure you did because you don't really remember Maybe I've holidays. Not, um, not your first Mother's Day? Of course not. Okay, perfect. I would like a skylight frame. Okay. We also got, uh, because Natalie did this with her father, it gave us the idea to do with Phyllis, my grandmother, who, you know, is getting older. Yeah, it looks like a real photo frame and it just like constantly is switching photos. So you don't have to like, frame you don't have to hang up every single frame photo it it holds thousands thousands and you can update it every day if you want 
Yeah, it's just stop having those outdated photos of yourself. I also love how easy it is to send photos. I would always like surprise my dad and just like email them a bunch of new photos and it would just show up on their skylight and it would just be like a bunch of new pictures that he hadn't seen before. So it was a really nice way to just like keep them included in the daily life, you know? Yeah, it just adds such a beautiful touch to your home. It's a gift from the heart. As a special limited time offer for our listeners, get 15% off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash files. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash files, F-I-L-E-S. Mother's Day is coming right up. So order today to get 15% off your purchase at skylightframe.com slash files. Obviously, I just talked about my yes. horrible, terrible, disgusting postpartum VO. Well, that sometimes I mean, it's not, that, it's not disgusting, baby. Can't help it. I don't. I can't really help it now. Yeah. But, but you know what is helping? Those Lumi deodorant wipes. So mm. now instead of making our pretty little precious baby's head smell like your bo, she no, smells just, delicious. Now she smells delicious thanks to the Lumi deodorant wipes. Yeah, no judgment. But let's like let's fix the problem when we can. And like honestly, I love the deodorant. I, I carry them around wherever I go. I mean, you never really know when you're gonna stink. You know? Yeah, it has a 72 hour odor control everywhere from your pits to your feet. Even your privates, which yeah. like sometimes, you, you know, stuff happens. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just wipe the body down. In fact, it was patients' concerns about private part odor that originally inspired the OBGYN who invented Lumi. I, I trust anything OBGYN say. I feel like they are so smart. They know everything. I trust them with anything. So the fact that one invented Lumi just makes me want it even more. Listen, it sucks when we stink. People think less of us when we smell bad. And like Lumi is solving that problem. And it's such a convenient thing and such an easy problem to solve now that Lumi exists. It's baking soda free, paraben free, and pH balanced for safe use below the belt. You can choose a variety of fresh bright scents like clean tangerine, lavender, sage, or toasted coconut. So no matter where you go or how long your day is, make sure you're always smelling fresh and clean with Lumi. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code V-I-A-L-L for 15% off your first purchase at LumiDeodorant.com. That's code V-I-A-L-L at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. LumiDeodorant.com. All right, The Valley. Let's get into I, it. Question for you, Zach. What made you want to do this show? And so, like, I'm, I'm curious because we, we, like, I'm, what, what I'm most fascinated about Bravo World is, like, you know, what's different than like, say, Bachelor or Love is Blind is that like it's for the most part, you know, people have come back on multiple Bachelor shows, but like it's a one off season. And if you come back, you kind of restart, you know, so to speak. And like, you know, these are ensemble casts, recurring roles. When you signed up for the show, like, you know, here, this is a show where we are talking about you guys, your characters, we're critiquing your behaviors. Next week, you might, we might watch the episode and we, you're not going to be here and we're going to be like, holy shit, fucking Zach, what the fuck was he doing? And we'll, we'll say something snarky and we'll laugh. And I don't know what your thoughts and feelings are on that, but like, it might not be easy to hear, you know, like there is the downside of being on reality TV and being talked about and being a public figure. And I honestly am curious, like, what was your expectation of going on the show and, and like even shows like this, you know, like, are you down for it? Is it all fair game? Like we cover these shows, like, like we people cover sports, you know, and that's how we look at it. But like, you're a human being, you know, it still might hurt your feelings, so to speak. But like, and, and, and this week you're involved in a very messy fight, which we'd love some context on because we feel like we're missing a lot of it. Uh, but to start, like, yeah, what made you want to do this? And like, what is your expectations of, of how fans should interact with characters like yourself? Well, I mean, I feel like when, <laughs> whenever anybody signs up for a one-off show or a show like ours that could go for, you know, however many seasons, you have to be a special person that has already built up tough skin. You cannot go into reality TV. And even if you're like the best person ever, 50% of the people are going to hate you. 50% might love you. And you're probably only going to see the hate comments. And even if it's only 100, sure, it's sure. still going to affect you in some way. But you have to go in with it with the mindset that, okay, you have to be yourself. Don't try. Like you were just saying with Sheena and Lala, they, they were trying. I don't think they're fully trying, but like 
you can't be inauthentic. So if you if you come in with like ready to talk about your life, you guys first thing you said is, so is it a wig? And I'm like, ha ha, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, 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 it's not. Sorry. <laughs> but like, yes, let's talk about that. Let me take my hat off. Let, if if I was like shy or didn't want to talk, okay, why would I have signed up for a show? You know what I mean? I'm willing to basically put my life on display and not hold back and not hide any aspect. And I think that is what you have to do and the mindset you have when you go into that. Okay. So you kind of have a, you, you accept the good and the bad that comes with it. Like you, you, right. Yeah. Like for instance, we're all kikiing right now. We're having a good time. You're like, Oh, you know, I'm like, I leave here. I'm like, Oh my God, Nick is so great. I don't know what people are talking about. <laughs> I mean, I think I do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I know throughout the season, there are good, I missed up in, in my life plenty. And that's okay because I did it. And if you guys, I know being on the show, it's also your all's job to be the ones to do that. Now, it, does it hurt sometimes? Like when you get the same thing over and over and over and it's like, God, but I, that's not me. Or I just don't want people to perceive me in a, a way that I'm um, not. But then I still have to be okay with people even hearing the truth and then not accepting it. And it's, oh, you know, sure. if you don't go in with that mindset, don't do reality TV. Because people are going to believe what they want to believe. They don't, really? they don't, they're not going to believe what. And they ain't ever going to do their research. Not one person. <laughs> there are so many comments that like, oh, so that, so that guy, wait, how is he with that girl? Because I'm confused. And I'm like, I am gay. Like it is, it says what I'm, there is no part of me. Episode you're, you're one, I'm saying, I'm saying yeah. Yeah, yeah, me and Jasmine, they're like, they're together, right? It, and I mean, it is not just one comment. It is multiple. I'm like, you guys are not paying attention. Yeah, Isn't it so wild how like Jasmine was on your season of The Bachelor and now it's yeah. like such a full circle moment. I full feel like. Well, Did she choke you too? I met her eight years ago. Sierra and I know each other from a party eight years ago. Oh, wow. And we almost started a podcast together. Oh my gosh. Yep. How crazy. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> So Jasmine hasn't choked you? No, but I did ask her if she wanted me to choke you for her. <laughs> what did she say? She yes said, no? no, like, go light on him. Oh, and I was did. like, okay, ah. Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty crazy. I feel like, Nick, we talked about this the other day. So I was like, didn't you get choked by, by her? And he was like, yeah. And then he also, he was like, I got slapped by someone else. And then he also like was he his boobs were his boobs his hands were on Corinna's boobs bare chest I feel like that would never happen in today's was, bachelor world I don't know I was no. put in a lot of uncomfortable situations <laughs> and you're just forced to be like uh, okay yeah. <laughs> like I said you're 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 like you it's a no win situation either you like say no and then you risk embarrassing the person putting themselves out there or you just literally just be a punching bag for people or allow people to choke you, you know, because you don't want to look like a dick, you yeah. know, so you're like, ah, oh, beat, choke me, whatever. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> you know, take my hands and put them wherever you want, Whoa. you know, like. That is crazy. bachelor. Yeah. What I will say doing? another thing um, that you were like, you know, why would I sign on to do it? I feel like our show is different from like other shows, like the housewives, maybe a couple have, you know, some connections or hang out or whatever. But our entire group actually hangs out. Like I've known Brittany my entire life. Jasmine was my roommate for two years. One one year being during COVID. Kristen. Janet lived in my building on my floor. I've known her from sh through Sheen. Actually, I call it uh, six degrees or like two degrees, honestly, in this group of Sheena Shea because literally I think Jasmine came in that way. Janet came in through Sheena. So I'm always like... A lot of our attachments are Sheena started the relationship and then um, we all became friends. But we've all been friends for years and we've all had drama that we're not tr even trying to get a show. It's like we're that's just who we are. What about Jesse and uh, Michelle? So they so Jesse and Jax have known each other literally that since tracks. since it tracks far too hard. <laughs> um, since like modeling days in Miami, which it's like, ugh, yeah. Exactly. A hockey bro um, modeled in Miami? Is he too, isn't he too uh, short? Jax is into hockey too. So remember he got offered a job? I mean, when he told me that, I was very confused. I was like, <laughs> what type of modeling? Hands? <laughs> um, 
but yeah, like is he? We, it, but I'm curious. I, I'm fascinated. Like who who would sign up for the show and say, "I'll I'll play the role of deadbeat dad." Is that who he is? Like, is that, oh, no. is he really the deadbeat dad? Or he, does he not realize at this dinner party just how douchey he comes across when he's this Every top, episode. Every episode. It's just like. Is, Some, something leaves his mouth and did it's he, like, no. Did he say, you know what, I'll just, I'll, I'll be that guy? Because, you know, it is good television. I mean, I can't speak for him, but I will just say as someone who experienced it and went through it and then also what i see like because i you know i don't know what he's going to say in a confessional or whatever and then i hear it i'm like wow and i don't see behind their closed doors when they film so seeing him interact especially in the um the therapy session my heart like sank for michelle because they had been going through problems you know the entire time but michelle is such a good person and so it's like to see her have to sit there and just have him just be so mean and every single time and at the capri dinner where he's like i'm like wait you're i thought you were just trying to get everyone to listen to her and now you're trying to shut her up i was like wow this is so controlling and then yeah seeing him in front of isabella too it's just it's just like you re- he decided to be messy. But that's who, th- th- that's, that's who the is. person you've gotten to know. Oh, I mean, he's, I didn't know, maybe it was, I've known him for like two or three years, three years. And I guess that's so, my question. You know him for two or three years. And we're, he was, seeing, we're seeing this very specific side of him. Is that all you've seen? Or over two or three years, have you got to see endearing, nice, oh, likable, oh, give this guy a chance? You know what I'm saying? Are there moments where we're just not seeing? Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, may, I mean, maybe there's going to no, be your, one that I don't know. But from my perspective, from, perfect, from what I've seen, not really. And yeah, like I remember one time Michelle was telling me a story about like, oh, Jesse has to have the, we, we have to clean all the sheets at this. Like he's very like OCD about some things. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, tell like what? Like tell him to do that. Like you don't have to adhere to whatever he needs it was like very weird yeah i didn't like that either that moment when she's in the kitchen like trying to prepare for a party and he comes in and goes why are you why did you wait 30 minutes until people come over and he's sitting at the island and she's like on the ground trying to pull out bowls and stuff and he was just like not gonna help you but i'm gonna criticize what you're doing and how you're doing it no i just such a loser like but that's what it, go, but that's what he do does that? that's just like kind of and listen you know i Maybe there's some other stuff that'll come up that I didn't see before that maybe will endear him to people. But um, I mean, I don't even think but like it's I just... think when when Jax Taylor can say that you're a douchebag, I think that's when you go, oh, God, like red lights, everything like you might be a problem. That's what I said. I said, Jesse makes Jax look not that bad. If you didn't know anything about Jax. If you didn't know. If you didn't know anything about Jax or didn't watch Vanderpump beforehand, you would think Jesse was worse than Jax. Even if you did, I think well, you'd Just- still feel that way. Justin has a theory about the how this, this, this episode opened up very differently. They showed a flashback of a scene we have never seen before. And usually Bravo doesn't seem to do that. Usually they're showing flashbacks of scenes we have seen before. Uh-huh. So it was kind of like weird. Well, I was Justin has a theory as to why. So my theory basically, so last episode, it was teased that there was some big fight, which is where like this racial argument kind of originates from. That being said, we start this week's episode not seeing that fight. We only see it through like flashbacks. And then we see like the clip of you confirming that you said something without context. Like we don't really know what that says. And I feel like sometimes there's contracts where there's gag orders on certain topics. And this was a sensitive topic and we didn't see the whole episode. So I don't know if that's like the topic being why Kristen was originally like possibly like left Vanderpump and that whole ordeal. Yeah. Um, well, I will say that our show also, and I think even with Vanderpump rules, they're starting to possibly do it. Like it's more, nobody believes that there's not a, like the fourth wall needs to be broken. We have, it is a very mm-hmm. large part. It's the other person on the cast and the Kardashians have done it because, oh wait, it works and we're, and we want to be believable and authentic. And when we can't mention certain things, it doesn't work. And so luckily, which I think is great, we've broken the fourth wall already and we continue to do so throughout the entire season. The way their storytelling it does require, the problem is you have, what is it, 12 people 
you guys only know Jack's Britney. Chris. So you have nine people that you need to care about, know their backstory, know how we're all connected. And it's, it's just messy because it's very hard and convoluted. So that's like, I think their storytelling technique. I think you're actually going to get a lot of flashbacks because there's things that are left out that I'm like, I know what they're doing. Like, and even in my, I'm being a conspiracy, a conspiracy theorist myself because we don't get the episodes that early. So I don't even know what's going to happen. And I'm like, oh, I can see. And so we all start to even make our own theories about what they're going to show or what they're going to flash back to. But I can promise, like, I bet the rest of the season, they do a lot of that. So what really- To give more context. What really happened? Like, who started this? Well, How did this fight turn into a whole conversation about whether Michelle was, was a racist because racist she- Republican. A racist Republican. So I'll start with, she is not either of those things. And that it was- a conversation about, I guess, that there was something said, whatever. What I will say, because unfortunately, if I say anything else, like this needs, you're going to see in the next, I, I hate to like, Understood. You, you, watch out and yeah. find out. Yeah, but like, it. unfortunately, but I'm telling you, it, it like all will be revealed. And I hate that. I literally hate that phrase, but all will be revealed. And it, you know, throughout the next couple episodes. What, but what specifically would be revealed? Next, how, why, how, who started it and why, where this rumor came from? Because that was like the big argument is who started it? Yes. Why is Kristen having to defend herself for alleged accusations about someone else being racist, given her past and things like that and how sensitive it was? And it's just more like, I think that's what the whole fight was about is trying to get to the crux of like who started it. Who said what? Well, and that is the, there's so many other things that are happening that again, which I, I love that you picked up on that because uh, m not that we're gag work because we're not about anything, but that they're using that kind of as a tool because you there is so much context to give. And if we gave it, it would be a three hour episode. You know what I mean? And it is because it has gone through different people and whatever. It takes a while, even for us as we're experiencing it to figure it out to like so what you're telling us we will get an answer is what you're saying yeah and yes you will you will get a def by the end so we'll either find out that you're the one who started it or you definitely didn't or we'll find out that Kristen is in fact guilty of starting this rumor or we'll find out that she in fact didn't or do we get to blame everything on jess you know what i'm saying is that yeah. what we're gonna yeah i really hate to say i can't say anything but yes you but the thing that I can tell you is you will get a definitive answer um, by the end of the season. You'll get it pretty much by the middle of the season, though. Of what? What will be answered like specifically? In a couple. Uh, uh, the what question specifically that, like, will be answered is yeah. exactly what you said. So where where everything came from, um, what exactly was said, and who it was said about. So is this kind of going to be the story for the next couple episodes then? Um, I assume but I, I think it, it should die down for a second. And cause we have, this is a very dramatic group. There's a lot going on and there's other things that pop up real soon. So I don't, you know, we don't get anything ahead of time. We just know what we've filmed. Mm -hmm. So in the hierarchy of the season, I'm like, okay, I know what could come next or what should be next, but it will definitely be the next couple of episodes. And then at the very end, it comes all back around. Can I ask if, the whatever was said about Michelle, whoever not whoever said it, but um, was it repeated correctly or was it kind of a classic case of uh, telephone? Like somebody dropped a, a a detail, added their own spin to it, and then that's what got back. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> I it's not a bad case of telephone. It's a miss. Yeah, it you'll miss, see, okay. you'll see. I was like, it, there, it's just maybe a. Uh, no, I'm just going to say you have to see because even if I said something else, it doesn't even, I'll just let y'all watch. I know that sucks and I'm sorry and send all the hate comments you want that I'm <laughs> baiting. gatekeeping and baiting you all. Are you at least able to let like Kristen off the hook? Oh, yeah. Cri Kristen, <laughs> Kristen can be her own worst enemy sometimes, but her heart is always there. And like, yeah, like Kristen is my best friend outside of like Brittany. Brittany Kristen, my rider dies in LA. And yeah, like we definitely, we definitely have gone through it this season. Um, ups and downs. And I didn't understand where she was coming from. She didn't understand where I was coming from. And there was 
in that regard, there was some miscommunication. There was like just a lot of emotions. And you will, you will also see like that as well. You'll see our friendship arc too. But Kristen is always Kristen. So, you know, but I can, uh, for me, I... Do you think Kristen's matured over the years? 100%. Because, I mean, just look at the Capri party in general, when she's trying to apologize and just sit there and be like, granted, like, I know there was a lot of stuff going on that was, that was a very hard to digest dinner. And you guys didn't even see the half of it. So that's why I know we're flashing back to things that were said there later but it was it was a very intense moment and but she did she was trying to take resp uh responsibility for actions maybe it takes her a little bit longer to fully realize why everybody's so mad but she does eventually do you think people were justified to be mad at her or do you think it was more in this particular instance Kristen having to uh, work against her reputation for you know being crazy Kristen and 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 being loose with her lips and starting drama uh and do you think it was more of that in this particular instance rather than actually her being the start of the drama I mean I I definitely think that that we were we were justified in the way that she disseminated the information because it was like she just where said, did this come from? She just said that because she was like backed in a corner or like that's how she felt, right? Because the whole like Alex being at guys night was Which dropped was, on her. I mean, when I say when you say like Jack Taylor's good reality, I'm like, did I say because or did you say that? Oh, oh or love. you said Jack. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, he is good television. I just uh, I'm, I'm oh, I've I always been very critical that. of Jack's because it's just like he has no as you should be. I think people that I don't think he's a bad person who doesn't deserve the spotlight he gets because and then i think other people are just you know some you know Kristen can be messy but like you said like she has a good heart and she is all and like she's great television and, tv yeah. yeah and larry jacks i think no one is literally safe with jacks i think he doesn't care about like again i'm not a i don't know how to i'm not i don't know how to diagnose people so this is just conjecture and just like one person's opinion but he there does something. come across as like sociopathic yeah I mean, for me, it's like, I don't know what the sociopathy is like such a very specific uh, thing, yeah. but I do feel like, but if there's anyone on reality TV who like truly doesn't care about anyone else but himself, doesn't understand good or bad or morals or values or doing the right thing or cares about his character or other people's character, he just cares about him and attention and winning and I, I have yet to have meet anyone or see anything that tells me anything other than that is who Jax Taylor is. Yeah. And we have over a decade of information on this. It's not like it's not like watching one season of The Bachelor and, and then one person judgments. has one and then making a snap judgment about one scene over, you know. You're because, like, I can write my thesis on this. Yeah, because yeah. someone Here like said, can I interrupt you, you know, and right. something trivial as that. We have a guy who has destroyed lives and, year and after year. year after year and not given any fuck and is never actually sorry. And, you know, I just, I, I, the thing and I think it's with everybody in our friend group. He has moments of like, oh, that like uh, I'm of being a human. Of human I know. Like, yeah, exactly. Of humanity. Of human I hate, life. I know. I hate when I do that, too. But, but is it um, actually him being a human or him doing what it, he him thinks trying a to get out. should do? Exactly. I know. Is it Performing. the performance? Yeah. 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 It's like, like he knew what to say about Tom Sandoval when everyone was saying it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, well, and also, I think the reason people are easily or not easily, but can he's been softened in some people's eyes is because. Britney is with him. Sure. In the end, it's like we all want to protect Britney, do what's best for Britney, <laughs> whatever that is. So we sometimes we walk a fine line to try to, you know, protect her, help. I don't know. Just one of those things that is very difficult to. He's part of the package, and he's also the father Britney. of her child. And so. my best yeah. friend, and I, and trust me, when when things went down in the past, there were moments where Jax and I had. Full on, like, I mean, we didn't throw fists or anything, but like full on fights where. Did he take his shirt off and try to hug you? 
That's a that's a Jax Taylor move. The run up. I'm the really run up. glad he didn't. Into a security you know? guard's arms. Yeah. But <laughs> never there, seen someone try to hug someone during a fight. I think he was yeah, I don't even know what he was trying season to do at that two, point. Anyone asking. <laughs> <laughs> or that um, season one. I don't know. No, it's season It's one Stassi's birthday. Yeah, Vegas. It's, is that but that's yeah. season one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. season, one. season one. But with we because over Britney, and then when they ended up getting back together, all of a sudden Britney and Jackson we I, I didn't hang out with them as much for a little while. And I realized, oh, because I got too involved and I kind of learned like, that's not, I need to stay neutral and do in that moment. Like I spend the night at their house more than other people, like other people have kids or whatever. I just stay over. And so I see a lot of things and deal with them in certain States where I'm like, okay, in this moment, what's going to help solve this now so we can get to a point where we could talk about this later and so it's kind of just like playing that neutral part now what do you want for your friend Brittany? like what if you were to give her what's it uh, friendly advice when it comes to her and her relationship with Jax? what would you what do you think it's best for her i think what's best for Brittany is following her heart no i i specifics i do i know i'm kidding <laughs> um i think what's best for Brittany is to protect herself and and also just she has not been happy and she'll straight up say this to anybody. She's not been happy. There has been so many situations that have gone down and she, she you know, it. the problem is it's so hard to rip off the last part of the bandaid. You know, it's yeah, like that's sure. the hardest part. And when you have a kid together and you have a house and all these things. It's a lot of decisions and a lot of paperwork and a lot of like emotions attached to this no, yeah. person. And breakups get very hard even even when you're breaking up from Jax Taylor, but do you think she'll be better off without him rather than trying to reconcile with him? And just in your opinion. Right. In my opinion, I, I think that at this point, it's clear there's no way forward because he's not making even the smallest effort. Yeah. I mean, there, so there, that there's, is, not a, yeah. there's not a single precedent from his behavior over the past 10 years that suggests that he is even capable, let alone willing to change. <sighs> exactly. Like, literally, he after things had happened in the past, like he, there was a moment where I think he had a come to Jesus moment and was like, Oh, I really am a, like, I'm a bad person or like thing. I'm not doing things right. And he did make a lot of changes. Unfortunately, there was a lot of things that were not changed. And then like, I think what were he the felt, changes he made. I mean, like, I hate to say like not cheating, not like just fully throwing Brittany under the, butt, or like, not like, um, Again, like just is this post um his father's yeah. death? Because I feel like once that happened, I think he really was like, I'm gonna try to be the man that my dad would be proud of or the husband. And I feel like we saw him make efforts at that point. But yeah, I know in the last year or two of like them not being on television, I feel like we saw like a retraction, just the, like social the last, media. Yeah, I well, three I say four years. Okay. So since tr- 2020, that's really what started because Cruz was um was conceived in 2020. And so the second it was, they had had issues before, but like COVID really did not do anybody any favors. And with them not being like being on top of each other and whatever, it became like assess. Yeah. Like just a very toxic environment environment. And it's like, you can't get away from it because it's COVID. So then why do you think they decided to like start a bar and a podcast and whatnot? Cause I feel like you've kind of now like, sh- like she's kind of like entrapped in in work life the thing that i think people again it, like you were saying with vanderpump rules like they're mad at ariana because it's three months no it, this was a year ago mm-hmm. so when we filmed last year i britney was britney has always been fully in love ride or die you know protect family with Jax. it wasn't until like probably october where the final straw happened and she's like, wow, you're, and you'll see it through the season. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate to say that, but like, you'll see so many moments of like, I mean, I see it. Well, you already see it, but you're going to get some real, especially when they um, have their date night and like a couple episodes and you've seen it in the preview where the cabin, Brittany's like, no, Brittany's like, I don't, well that too. Oh God. Cause he always comes after her because he's deflecting on his own behavior. Right. And it's like, Brittany doesn't, isn't doing this it's you and he wakes up mad and angry and it's like dude sometimes just give her a break she's the sweetest person and she can deal with why you. can't you just kick him off the show his, her show their show 
their little po- their the podcast. podcast. Yeah. Oh well, like, I why mean, so right? Yeah. Why doesn't why doesn't it just Britney? Well, I mean, I think they're you know those are business decisions that they'll you know figure out together. Um, and for now, I think they're alternating hosting, and then every once in a while they'll host one together. Do you think there's a a, a world like? But let's Britney's look- a bigger person. That's the thing is she can deal with it and. And you that's like, how like strong better, like, she is. Char- character wise. Yeah. Like if this was me, I, yeah, I'm not professional. Like I'm going to go off on like, no, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go to your house, probably pop your tire so that you can't make it to the, you know what I mean? Like, where do you think Britney's priorities lie? Because for example, like Jack's priority seems to be the Valley. He wants this to work. This is his second chance. He got fired from Vanderpump, you know, from an optic standpoint, from a fan of Bravo and just like being a, you know, if you are a fan of Jax, you're like, I haven't really seen this guy. He's he's kind of disappeared, right? He's got his platform. He's got his Instagram. You haven't really seen him. Now the Valley comes out. It's on TV. It's like, you know, what what Vanderpump was supposed to grow into. There's even like talk of like Lala and Sheena moving to the Valley in hopes that like they can get on the Valley. If Vanderpump like doesn't go anywhere after this, that seems to be Jax's priority like make this work at all costs because all jacks knows how to be is a reality tv star he doesn't even know how to be a good person barely knows how to be a husband maybe a decent father well i was gonna say functioning human. yeah but i guess my question is as a friend to britney where do you think britney's priorities lie where do you think the valley lies in her list of priorities because i ask you the reason i ask Mm -hmm. you is because now publicly they're going through a separation possibly a divorce we're in the beginning of season one of the valley i think everyone hopes that there is a season two but that may not you know align with britney's overall like values like it's there's a strong argument to be made that like britney on her own on social media probably does just fine she's probably the breadwinner i'm guessing as a mom she she has great influence and you know what she might use as a mother and how you know everyone seems to really like britney she's probably making money outside of the valley and there's a strong argument to be made that for her own mental health and the health, mental health of her child and her just general sanity that she shouldn't be on a she wouldn't be she shouldn't be working with her ex-husband and I don't think Jax is going to leave the Valley if season two Valley comes on. So is there a world where Brittany says, you know what, this is not, this is not for me. I don't think that Brittany sees it like that because she is so good at being able to separate that. And also why should she have to like bow out when it's her best friend? It's, it's all of I mean, her friend group too. I, no, I, I know, I'm not talking I'm about like, like, what would be fair or what would be right. It would no, be because Jax Taylor, again, the only thing Won't. he seems to care about is this show. And we all know he's not going to fucking budge. Yeah. And would it be fair? Absolutely not. Would most of the audience be like, it should be Britney if we have to pick it. Jax needs to go. I'm just saying, but like if at the end of the day, that's why I asked, what are Britney's priorities? Because at the end of the day, yeah. she's going to have to look in the mirror and say, what matters most to be my mental health, my child, me as a mother, my sanity, you know, or being on a reality TV show. Yeah. Um, and, some, I mean, and she might have to choose between the two. They might not be something that she can pull off. Well, and I don't, I, I do agree that I don't think Jax is going to make it easy. Mm-mm. He's not, he doesn't make anything easy. And even, even though he's like, cause I've had conversations with him after and I've said, like, I just want to make sure that you're not going to come after her, that you're not going to, you know, make this hard on her, that you're not, well, but, but as her best friend, I was trying to like behind the scenes be like, dude, you don't do this. Like, please just let her be for once. Like, just give her some grace. But I'm asking you, do you think Brittany will? I think Brittany will come back for sure. B- no matter her, what no matter what because she yeah but like that to me i guess I, back to the whole ariana of it all you know like lala and sheena want it more but you know what i'm saying La- ariana is uh, the host of love island she is the star of chicago she is getting all these deals and what's clear is though even though i'm saying that like what lala and sheena like seem to be bothered the most is that ariana tries the least at the end of the day despite like us we're you know we're still like you know what i, I sent it to the you know what was trending on twitter over the weekend scandal 
That's fucking crazy. That's crazy that this much time so, has yeah. passed from the actual scandal and that over the fucking weekend, mm-hmm. somehow that was trending. Why? I don't know, but it's clearly still very much talked about. And so like season 11 is obviously the fallout of Scandival. And like, obviously we need Ariana to be there. But even on season 11, as much as like we are riding for Ariana, and again, I empathize with where she's coming she's from. She's not playing game. At the end of the day, she's not, she's not playing, like, this is all about her. I'm defending her because I'm defending the fact that like she has outgrown this show. Mm-hmm. Now, if season 12 comes along and Ariana is still playing the whole like can't hang out with Tom Sandoval routine and how could you guys? It's kind of like, well, why did, why did you come, come back, back Ariana? All. Like yeah. I I root for her happiness and I root for her and like she has transcended Vanderpump. So it's kind of like, why go and transcend Vanderpump? And again, life's not fucking fair. My point isn't whether, if, if we all ask, if the question is who deserves to be on season two of The Valley more, <laughs> Brittany or Jax, it's unanimous. It's, right. it's Brittany. Yeah. But that's not the question. The question right. is, knowing how reality TV works, when Jax Taylor says, fuck this, I put this show together, I am this show, whether we actually believe that or not. Right. <laughs> and he's like, I'm not fucking going anywhere. And the producer's like, well, he might be a bad person, but he's great fucking TV. So we're not going to fire him. And it's like, Brittany, what do you want to do? And I'm just saying, like, it, you eventually Brittany is going to be faced with that decision. And fans are going to say, hey, listen. Sometimes you just have to pick being a better mother or your own mental health, and it's not fair. And the fact that you are so willing to work with this piece of shit questions like just how how shitty it is. Some life is full of tough choices, and yeah. I'm just wondering if if Brittany, without exception, you're guaranteeing she'll be on season two, regardless of what Jax does or doesn't do, or how miserable he makes her life. Eventually, that's going to be flack. She's going to have. That's going to. That's a decision she's going to have to defend. Yeah, but I feel like with Brittany, unlike Ariana, and especially in this season, like again, it's only three months. That was a nine-year relationship that ended with a seven-month cheating scandal with her best friend. If that had happened, I would say 100% she was pro- probably not coming back. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's like, you got to get out of that situation or whatever. Maybe, I don't know. But I feel like Ariana came back, made a choice and maybe isn't playing ball and not like, like you, if you're on the show, you have to at least If you're going to like have a scene with him, yell at him then, you know what I mean? Then have it out with him. But I feel with Brittany and Jax, she would do it. And then, but she's gonna, because she's the best mom ever. She can do that and handle the show with Jax. And I feel like she's just different. She's done it before too. She's done it before. She's had to. He cheated on her and whatnot. She kind of had her like single. Yeah. I mean, it's just. And also if you think about it, Stassi had to stay on when Jax was terrible to her. Kristen had to stay on when James was terrible had, to her. Had to? Well, not had to, but like it's well, that's their my job. Point. Like Stasi was a 23 year old, like up and coming, wanting to make it in Hollywood. Brittany is is in a very different situation. She has other people to care about, including, you know, and I'm just at some it's point. Jack. Yeah, but I feel like but you can Again, film. we all know what Jax is going to do. <laughs> I know. Again, we're not, we're, we are, this argument is, this, this discussion is based off the okay, assumption well, that me... Jax is a piece of shit, yeah. right. only cares about himself, has no morals, yada, 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 yada. Right. So let me add this into it. Jax is going to do it behind cameras or on camera. So like, he's going to be just as horrible to her off camera that he would on. So why not get paid for it? That's that's where I'm at. Why not show the world your side of the story? That exactly. Too. Because also, thank you. Actually, that's mm-hmm. a great point. Because now, because Jack's always media facing. I love my, my wife is amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Gets home. Different story. That is like, why should she not be able to tell her side? I, think, I mean, well, I know you didn't say what she's. You well, know, and she, she would. But I'm just saying like, she coming back. It's kind of the same thing for me with the like Ariana and Tom Sandoval thing where everyone's like, why won't she move out? And like, why won't he? Like, why is it like to where she needs to make the big decision to be the bigger person? But at the same time, I'm like, if uh, both people are tied into something. I'll tell you, I mean, to the answer your question is because because Ariana is the one who refuses to be around Tom and Tom has no problem interacting with Ariana. And the, 
again, it's not about whether you think he has no problem living in the same house as her. <laughs> no, I don't think Tom cares. I don't. I think he cares because Ariana is willing to make his life difficult, and it's a very much an inconvenience to him. But he's not emotionally triggered by Ariana. Just mm-hmm. you know, Ariana's triggered by Tom. Mm-hmm. We all understand why. So again, this, this is not about fair. We understand it's not fair. Oh, it's, we're not. It's about fair. like sometimes life makes you make a couple tough choices. But I, like again, I can understand where Ariana's coming from. From I can empathize with how she's fe- feeling, but eventually you just have to make a choice. And if you keep putting yourself in the same situation that triggers you over and over, every time that happens, you you get to complain about being triggered less and less. That's all I'm saying. Well, I think actually, <laughs> I think actually the uh, I agree with that though. You can't complain about being triggered if you're if you're putting yourself in those situations. But like, look at Stasi. She decided not to come back. She was originally supposed to be part of our show. She decided not to yeah. because she has it's like I don't need this because in she's, my life. She's has so much success and like she's doing amazing yeah, things exactly. on social media and on like multiple podcasts now mm-hmm. um i'm i wouldn't be surprised if she started her own network like that's that i i see that for her so she outgrew it she decided you know what this is i'm not gonna put myself in that situation i feel like with with britney especially she's like okay well it's not that she hasn't outgrown it but she's just she has a child with Jax, and he's gonna be on the tv show no matter what so it's like it's almost like in that way, she's going to be pulled on anyway. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I'd rather be, have the ability to defend myself versus let one person set up a narrative however it fits them. And then having to be like a like a Rachel and get on my podcast or get on my social media to like act like I removed myself because I'm over it. But in actuality, I'm commenting on everything and watching it like with a hawk. Eye. I hear that. But it's back to the, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And I just like going to war with Jax Taylor will never allow you to be happy. Yeah. But because he'll never quit. Yeah. But, he'll never concede. But he, but she has a child with him. She is tied she to him. him She's forever. stuck with him. So it's not like removing herself from the show ain't going to help anything. Because I always love when people are like, you have a kid together, so you're tied together for 18 years. I'm like, no, no it's life. forever. For life. <laughs> like, for life. And and yeah, it's just like there's no there's no other bond like having like a kid. Like that, a thousand percent. Your kid gets married in 25, 30 years from now. You got, you're still running into your ex. It's Maybe never, even forced to walk yeah. down the aisle again with them. But I will say, since they've been separate... I have never seen Britney more happy, more flourishing, whatever. So even though Jax is still, it's funny because she now, now she laughs at the things because she's like, I don't even have to deal with you like this. So actually, I think she's in a better mental state anyway. And I think that'll continue because now she can go, okay, bye. I'm going to go to my house. Um, I'm going to take our kid. I'm going to go to my house. Now she's done. She can block him on things and she doesn't have to have it at home too. I love that for her. No, because I also just heard a clip from their podcast and Brittany typically doesn't put Jax in his place. You kind of see it in the first episodes of The Valley that it's like Jax does something and who's there for cleanup crew? Brittany, not Jax, not defending himself, whatever. Um, and then they did a, a podcast episode and there was a snippet where she was calling him out. And I was like, oh, I, I love to hear it because she would never put him in her in his place before. And now that they're not together, she's like, no, well, you're the one that kept talking about it. There was yep. a well, wait, when Kristen Jax and Brittany did an interview with like, I think it was like Access oh, or whatever. Oh, and he's like, God, I just want to like, I don't want to talk about that stuff. And Brittany's like, I'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I loved it. <laughs> That was pretty it great. Was, it was, oh, it was just so perfect. And she's like, okay, well, I'm ready. So, <laughs> and Kristen's in the middle of them. And it's just like, it's so awkward, it's but so, so great. Okay. I yeah. just have one small question. Yeah. Uh, so in the episode, they cut back to a flashback, not once, but twice of you saying, well, you're not wrong. How do you feel about that being in there with no context whatsoever. I mean, it is it is hard. <laughs> Number one, it's hard for the audience. I bet you guys like it's so confusing. It's so it confusing. Seems like you're confessing that you did it. I know. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm again not and trying then to. Kristen give... was like blaming you. Yeah. Right. Well, and that and and that uh, I get uh, I get how it looks. Next episode, next we'll week, more. you see all like the context of it all, and Kristen has in her confessional like what happened. It's a much more. They go more deep diving into it. Mm-hmm. I almost thought uh, like Vanderpump Villa, they gave like three episodes out at first to like, so you get to know the people instead of just trying to do it episode by episode. And so when you get to this last episode, I'm like, oh, great. I was like, okay, I'm going to look real like 
flip floppy, lion. A little shady. Little yeah. sh- I mean, don't get me wrong. I am shady sometimes. I am petty. I am whatever. But in this moment, I was like, but they didn't. I was like, editing was shady in that one. <laughs> but you will see next episode more explanation of it. And that flashback, obviously, I did say more. And I think they're going to use another clip from that too. So it's. I actually am really enjoying how they are changing up the storytelling with our story or with our show. What do you want people to know about you as a person or a personality on the show going into that then since you're kind of at the stake right now? Yeah, um, I really hope people take the chance to get to know me. Um, I'm definitely a very polarizing person. Just I'm loud in general. This is not for show or anything. I'm just a loud person. I have opinions on everything. Um, And but I'm ride or die loyal to my friends and my family. And I just hope people take the time to get to know me and they can look past the hair. Uh, why wouldn't you have great hair? I know. I Listen, <laughs> I I know. Think, can we see it now? Yeah, because I can't. This. Only, if, only if you're comfortable. I, <laughs> see, that's the thing. No, I'm great like, hair. It's that's gorgeous. great. There's there's throw it back. Just give them a, give them a, give them oh, a, the hairline. Yeah, there yeah, we go. There's the hairline. There's it's the hairline. Tucked. Oh, it's great. Wait, it's first it's class. It's growing out of it. Tug on it, please. It's first class. It's first class. <laughs> yeah. Just it. Sticking. I don't want to rip it. No, <laughs> did it. Did it seem real? It's real. It's good. Okay, guys, it's a toupee. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> After all that, no. It looks great, man. Great hair glue. Yeah. <laughs> so I ran um, out there with the deviated septum. <laughs> uh, gorilla glue. Hell. Uh, Throw back to that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else before we let uh, our boy Zach go? I think that I think that covers it. Wait, did I just survive my first vile files? You did you great, did. man. You did oh great. my god, thank you. We should were get you, you a t-shirt. Were you worried? <laughs> I know. No, that should I was one I was gonna actually suggest that on the side to see. I was like, you guys should have like I survive vile files. <laughs> oh, we should give them to <laughs> all the guests people. after. Well, because I scare people? I've heard I've heard you 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 do some things to people. Like I think Excuse people me? what <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You what? heard from who? Like scare people? Like just people in ge- like just the general public was like, you know, because you're hard hitting. You will come in with like questions that are, you know, putting I, the pressure on. So wait, you're what, not, are you, what are you saying? <laughs> when you say I'm I saying do you're things, good could you be more specific. He's saying that you ask the hard hitting questions that I are just, a little yeah. more difficult oh, to okay. answer. It's more direct. Uh, yeah, he asked the you, questions the we want to know. It's, yeah. questions. Yeah. it's not fluff and stuff. Fluff and stuff. You know, you're yeah. more like, hey, by the way, did you or didn't you? And yeah. you're like, be scared. I don't want you to be scared. I'm here for it. Well, I'm not now. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I would never, I wasn't scared before. But I'll mail you the t-shirt. No, Thank you. You survived. <laughs> Speaking of surviving, on Thursday, going deeper, the one and only Monica Garcia is with us. Ooh. Uh, love her so much. Um, it's a really good interview. So exciting. It's a really good interview. It was. Uh, Do you know who that is? I was like, Salt Lake City I was like, Housewives. Oh, the finale. Oh my God. Bermuda. Oh, Receipts. Oh, sorry. I. I don't know her last name. Again, that's a Bravo thing. God, what is <laughs> Bravo? We, Monica, we get this Salt together. <laughs> Monica Salt Lake City Housewives. I, Mo, if you said Monica from Reality Bunkies, I would have. Yeah, God, I don't. Yeah, uh, I. Uh, we were hard on Monica. Heck yeah, you the were. hardest. I wasn't even. I was even sure if we should give her a shot, but we did. It, I don't know if it was scan. It wasn't like scanned of all level of. It it, it was a. Uh, we had to iron some things out, and we and I feel like we did. We'll give our thoughts and opinions on the following re- a week from now because I don't want to give anything away. However, they went into thinking about Monica, I want them to go in with the same, you know. And I'm just curious. Like, we try to be as objective and as hard hitting as possible. I don't know how objective, but hard hitting, yes. You don't think we're objective? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I gave Tom Sandoval every opportunity to be on time. <laughs> <laughs> you get three hours, an hour, yeah. not three hours. Yeah. Zach. That's hilarious. We really appreciate you. I really appreciate you, you for, for having coming. me on. Uh, wish you nothing but the best the rest of the way. Uh, I hope the season goes great for you. And just know that whatever we say about you on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I will repost it and be like, how dare he? This is right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're just covering you as a ca- you are an entertain. You are now an entertainer. Mm-hmm. You, are, you are basically in the professional sports of pop culture. Yep. We're just here to Monday morning quarterback your Choices Your on life. TV. <laughs> yeah. No, just on TV, really. Your life choices. Anything you put build. out. Like, that's how we operate on the show. It's like, if you say it on TV or you say it on your social media platform, Freaking you out. want it out there. And like, you, and you, like that, and that's how I look at it. And it's just like, you know, sometimes I put things out on the internet and I might have the best of intentions, but I still chose to put it on the internet. And even if I, you know, talk about how, like, how great it is to be a dad and blah, 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 and the internet decides to, like, 
comment about something else that has nothing to do with my commentary on being a dad, I didn't have to post that shit. I did not have to put it out there. No one, no one needed to hear my opinion. I wanted them to. And I elicited feedback. Mm -hmm. And even if I turn off comments, that's really not how it, it works. So it's just kind of like one of those things. We, we choose to be in the public eye. Yep. And therefore, like, whether you want, we all want people to care. We just don't get the, and we all prefer them to care in a positive light, but we don't get that choice. We just have to be grateful that they do. Yeah. And I feel like for me, especially, like, I definitely make mistakes. I, I, but it's at the end of the day, it's like, can you own your mistakes? Cause like, even with like Tom Sandoval, sometimes I'm like, stop saying, but you ought like every mm. single time or just be like, actually it was passionate, man. It was so passionate. Like, Oh my God, you just got to miss the passion. Oh my God. You're that's a great Tom. Sandoval. <laughs> <laughs> passion, I thought man. he, I, I was like, wait, did you Skype guys, him in? Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> like it was, there was so much love. It was, all, it was just like, but if you understood how much love there was, yeah, like yeah. you would do it too. It's passion. <laughs> so much passion anyways oh we're passionate about this show and we're passionate about you <laughs> listening we uh, thank you for doing so we want to say thank zach for coming on the vile files and giving us the inside scoop at all things the valley we do have monica and tyler cameron with us this thursday on going deeper all i gotta say is breaking news tune in holding my breath wow that's all i gotta say <laughs> wow, 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 wow. until next time and bye. then we're back with ask nick on monday yeah back with uh, yeah. yeah for sure go what was the yeah. title of this week's episode that's actually right now. Go back and fucking listen to it. Cheating okay. Calendar. Oops. Cheating, Cheating calendar. calendar. What's my title of my episode going to be? Or is it? What just do you want name? it to be? Should we should we brainstorm that now? Do you, would you? Would you? What? When I say cheating calendar, what does that mean to you? That means that there's a calendar that somebody found or like that was on somebody else's phone, and then they saw that they had like set up cheat dates. Is Their appointments. Right? Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. We should go listen so, to Ask <laughs> Nick and find out. <laughs> oh, find out more. Uh, it's a great episode. Check it out. Bye. 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 Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.